But what's I, I was trying to think, E-Man, of the last show that we had you on for. And I know it's been since Jurassic World, because we both oh. hated that movie. And I think yeah. it was a Marvel movie, wasn't it? Maybe it was. I don't know. We were also talking about how it's been way too long. So welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. This is, oh, by the way, this is all because of the people. People wanted it, so we had one to apply. One person, actually. <laughs> yeah, one in particular. <laughs> one person is quite enough. Yeah, so shout out to Darian. Uh, literally just <laughs> tweeted at us. was like, yo, where where is this? Why isn't this happening? And I was like, you know what? It's a good call. We'll do it. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, why don't you go ahead and plug your channel and everything real quick uh, before we get started. Yeah, um, E-Man from E-Man's Movie Reviews. You can find me um, everywhere on social media. Uh, probably the best place will be the Facebook fan page where we have tons of fun with uh, movie trailers, movie news, funny memes, and just movie reviews on occasion as well. Um, and if you want the video stuff, check me out on YouTube and uh, and Instagram as well. E-Man's Reviews. E-Man, just like He-Man without the H. Yeah. Top notch memes, by the way. Top notch. And E Man, you're I mean, you're mainly known for your your YouTube channel, but I love just going on your Facebook because the amount of engagement in your community that you've grown there is ridiculous. You have like so many top fans and they're always commenting. And there's some good combos that are going on in the comments section whenever you like post a trailer or post a meme or whatever it is. You know what? I will take your word for that because it gets so chaotic sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, crazy, I yeah. just drop it and I run, you know, because <laughs> I'm like, I don't I don't want to get involved with any mess. I don't want to get, you know, because sometimes things go left and sometimes they go right. Yeah. But uh, but either way, I man, look, that that community is awesome. I love every single person, even if I don't know them. Mm -hmm. uh, people show me mad love. I try and show it right back at them. You know, and uh, yeah, it, it's always a good time. So I for sure I have fun and I hope everybody else continues having fun, too. For sure. Well, like I said, we appreciate you coming on and uh, I'm happy. OK, really? <laughs> <laughs> and now the commercial break. <laughs> yeah. God. You've never done that before. Let right me now. get this squeaky toy. I've never get even the, played get with the other toy. <laughs> That's mine. That's mine now. That's my dragon. You see what you've done? Uh, this is why you don't have a dog, right, E-Man? It <laughs> could be, your YouTube yeah. Channel. Yeah, I'm That's sure the kids never make any noise. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did want to... You're about to be witness to me just lambasting Mark right now because mm. now you don't have an excuse for why you're late all the time. You're literally... I, I drove to your late. house the other day. It, was, it took me six minutes. Yes, sir. And you were still 25 minutes late today. That's false. No, it's not. We we're recording at 705. I, I have a witness. Five minutes late. I have a witness. He was in and I was like, Mark's still not here. It wasn't like I was doing any big events in my life that you were happening. You paid somebody prior. to move all of your shit. No, it's not like that. <laughs> yes, it is. Have you ever moved, E-Man? I have, and it's the worst experience of my life. I will never I will never move again without hiring movers, but still, I, you realize how much I'm shit you have to unpack and place. It, Kelly had me go out to Costco at six o'clock. Like, what is that? Ooh, six p.m. is like the worst possible. It's the time. worst time. By the way, is there a more lawless place on this planet than the parking lot at a Costco? Uh, <laughs> the the fifteen foot aisles are probably more lawless in the Costco. Mm, people don't just know. don't care. Has anybody ever taken anything out of your cart? Um, no, I don't think so. Man, I was about to, that's happened to you. I was about to throw hands with this old woman. Oh yeah. man. Like that, think about the audacity you got to have. I guess if you're old, it's like, whatever, I've been here for a while, I'm good. But I'm, can you imagine I'm pretty, just seeing something you liked and taking it out of somebody else's cart? I, I think you'd be protected under the law because that's, that's theft, right? I think so. Yeah, you can protect your property. Old people can do whatever they want, pretty much, though. They think they can. Like, I won't they, call you out for cutting can. me in line. Yes, I am that guy. Yeah. Um, Tell me about your move today, Mark. It sucked. How many, how many of your Batman say? memorabilia items are set up already? None yet. I'm, I'm still doing... Uh, so, Eman, I have my own office now. And nice. I, 
Kelly would put all of my Batman and DC and nerdy shit in our storage unit because we lived in a one bedroom apartment in Chicago or in my basement. And yeah, or in his basement, <laughs> like my statues and all that nerdy crap. But now since I have an office, I actually have a place to put like hang all my comic books do all that kind of posters, movie posters, statues, all of that. So I'm just kind of trying to envision right now how I'm going to make this make this thing look, but it's tough. I like it. I'm curious, E-Man, because you get a lot of uh, early previews and people send you stuff like promotional stuff. Like what's what's hanging up in in your I don't know. Do you have like a man cave or something like what do you have hanging up on your walls? (laughs) First of all. I don't even have a basement and I live in a house full of women. I've yeah. got three daughters and a wife and uh, yeah, man cave. No, no, I don't have that. Um, if I, I don't know if people could see us right now or not, but what you see behind me is exactly what I have because uh, most like of the time when I, <laughs> yeah, when, I, when I do get stuff, I give it right back away. So, yeah, you know, I just give it back to the people. I don't, I don't keep any of it. Truly a man of the people. I'm actually, I think I'm the worst person ever because I entered for E-Man's giveaway for John Wick 3 and I won it. And nice. I was I was doing something that week. I think I was traveling for work and I get home and then I had to go back into work. But I like unboxed everything. I'm like, oh, my God, a poster like it had the movie poster and everything. And I was so pumped. But I was like in a rush and I never actually thanked you. So thank you oh. so much. For that Man. giveaway, because now I have a John Wick three poster that I'm going to frame and put in my office. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm kind of surprised you didn't buy the uh, sideshow John Wick yeah. statue. That's, Is that on the list? It's probably. It, yeah, it's. Are, do you ever look at those things, E Man? Like the sideshow and Prime One statues at I, any of the cons know, or anything? I don't look for them, but like whenever they pop up. I'll like definitely take a gander like, oh, my gosh, these are really well made. Yeah. And uh, they're fa- like, I'm, if I had the space, I'd get one. It's a uh, it's an expensive edition. Uh, I, I really want to go pick up this giant. So Mark has been storing his Bane, his what was it? Batman, the animated series, or is it more comic accurate? The Bane? Yeah, I would it, say it's, it's more, got like it's the comic actual, accurate. OK, yeah. the backbreaker. Yeah, it's kind of like the the Bane from it's kind of like um Kelly Jones's Nightfall Bane. Oh, but it's it's the sideshow nice. one and is like okay. his arm is just bigger than his whole torso and oh, his tries are just popping out. Yeah. It looks like he has boobs coming out of his shoulders. It's it's very weird. <laughs> yeah, it's tra- but he's been storing it's it in traps. my basement. I I kind of want to pick it up and like put it in front of the camera just so everybody can see how big this box is. Yeah. And I got family coming over tomorrow. I'm like my wife is going to murder me if you don't get this thing out of my basement. Yeah, it's an expensive hobby. I'm in a group on Facebook where it's all statue collectors. And you wouldn't believe some of these guys have probably close to fifty to hundred thousand dollars worth of statues in their house. That's insane. It's like upwards of like a hundred different statues. And I don't even buy the most expensive ones. There's like prime ones like prime one has statues that go for like over a thousand dollars on average. And it's like you get you get into this stuff and you're just dropping all of your money. You are now, your wife your leaves money. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, are these are these like collectors items? Like do they gain value over time and you can flip them or yeah, or is yeah, that just so, really just for personal collections? Well, for both. Like if you like a character and you see a statue that reminds you of a comic or a movie that you loved, that's kind of what appeals you to buying it. But there are like Sideshow does exclusives, so they'll tell you the quantity. So the Bane I got, I had to get it off of eBay because I missed out on the exclusive, which had like a swap out head and all that kind of stuff. And okay. based on the quantity, you kind of get a feeling of like how rare it's going to be and how much demand there is going to be for the statue. So I, the one on that is what, like number 24 out of 800? Yeah. What 800 is not a lot. Usually they make around like 2,500 of these statues that they roll out each month or two. Yeah. The Spider-Man nice. one I got on pre-order is ridiculous. I'll send you a picture <laughs> after the chat. E-Man, you're going to Please do. Like, oh, is that a Todd amazing. McFarlane one by any chance? What's up? Todd is it a McFarlane? Um, it looks more like, I think it looks more like a John Romita Jr. 
uh, version of Spider Man. It's still it's still pretty sweet though. They okay. it has a swap out head that kind of looks like the Todd McFarlane stuff. Okay, but yeah, it's dope. Cool. We got a couple people in the chat right now asking us Star Wars questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and hold that off until we get into the spoil because we are gonna spoil this. We're gonna get I know there. that's like your kryptonite. We, we Let's will do warn it. everybody and I'm we'll spoil ready. it. I know you I'm don't ready. normally do that, but uh, prepare yourself. I already so. released my spoiler free stuff, so I'm free now. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Mark, you're going to heck. Why? Because you tried to defraud AMC. Oh, yeah. I told you about that. Don't. <laughs> well, should we, we shouldn't probably bring this up since E-Man is like he gets all the exclusive previews to the movies and early showings. But I made a stupid mistake, E-Man. I was like, Kelly wanted to go to a movie and I have the AMC Stubbs list um, mm-hmm. subscription. And I was just looking on Reddit and somebody mentioned like, oh, all you have to do, like if Ke- if your wife or whoever wants to go, just change your ma- name in the bio to her name. And I'm like, all right. So I changed. I went into my profile. I went in the settings and I changed Mark Auska to Kelly, Kelly Auska. And I changed it and it locked it. It basically wouldn't allow me to change it back. And it's, it's like the same thing on Twitch. Like you yeah. can't you can't build <laughs> your like, name up shit. and then sell it. I was like, <laughs> shit. I'm like, and then I looked at the Reddit thread and it was like from two years ago and then i clicked a more recent one and they're like oh yeah they they figured out about this and they fixed it i'm like all right well <laughs> so i called the guy and he probably knew i was full of shit i was 100 i was like hey i i wanted to pay with my wife's credit card so i thought like i was just i needed to update yeah you need to update the profile name and stuff so that's, that's top tier bullshittery though like way to think on your feet it's all right i <laughs> I've been a long time customer. He probably doesn't give a crap. It's probably like a 16 year old kid. Like, all right, man, 100% he doesn't whatever, care, but <laughs> nice. Don't do that though. Don't change your name in the AMC Stubbs app. It does not. I, I will not. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Let's get into a little bit of news. Shall we? News to us. Boop. So we got some pretty high hype trailers this week. Starting with a teaser, I guess, for A Quiet Place Part 2. Uh, so the, the main thing that I took away from like seeing the, you know, like the, the big wall of text that says like, you know, um, Emily Blunt's back and so is now Killian Murphy's in it. Mm-hmm. I, did, I had no idea he was a part of this movie. Very pumped for that. Her foot is still messed up, so it kind of leads you to believe it's, it's taking place right after the end of the first one. E-Man, I'm going to let you go first. What do you think about this? Are you excited that they're they're following up this story? Do you think they should have left it alone or what? Man, I'm first of all, I trust John Krasinski at this point. Um, that is not a sentence know, I ever thought I would hear. <laughs> I, me neither. But, you know, the guy came out of the box and just really impressed me with The Quiet Place. Um, I didn't think that it needed a sequel. I knew that after all the word of mouth and, you know, the box office numbers, somebody's going to pressure you to make a sequel. So when (laughs) it was announced and with this trailer and everything, I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'm on board. As long as you guys make it creative and interesting um, and keep it fresh, I'm with it. So I'm look, I'm, I'm down. Mark. Yeah. I don't know. I, the first movie we were, I think a lot of people were just frustrated at the kids because in the beginning you're like just be quiet just that's all you <laughs> yeah. need to do i was frustrated yeah. with everybody in the theater that wouldn't be quiet yeah the theater too that was that was rough you guys um, had loud theaters oh yeah yeah my theater was quiet no i had a guy like eating popcorn and i felt like he was leaning into my ear while he was eating he was just chewing i'm like get out of my face Ugh. um but yeah the the theater experience was just the, the crinkling of rappers yeah. was the loudest it's ever been in that movie in my theater. It was unacceptable, but yeah, I'm excited <laughs> for this overall though. Um, like I said, it's weird that you're, we're saying John Krasinski is on his shit, but he is. And well, since he came out with a quiet place, so Jim ho- just turns and looks at the camera. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully <laughs> this one lives up to all the hype, but I'm pretty pumped for it. All right. Uh, this is a really short teaser. I really don't know where they're going to go with this. It's weird, though, because the kids look older, but her foot's still messed up. Yeah. Something fishy's, something fishy's going on. And uh, I think, did you mention the trailer? The first full trailer, I believe, is dropping January 1st. I didn't see that, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna, it's I saw that. It was January 1st, or beginning of January. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, okay. This is more Mark. Mark, I'm just going to let you go on this. You watched the trailer for Superman Red Sun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So can you give me the premise on this? Yeah, we actually talked about it a few episodes ago. So instead of it's an Elseworlds, it was an Elseworlds comic where instead of Superman crash landing into Kansas, he crash landed into Ukraine and he became part of the Soviet Union, et cetera, and became what is known as Red Sun Superman. Yep. So yep. DC animated films are always on top of their shits. It, I, I don't really have no much doubt. to say. So. I, I don't think I've ever seen one where I was like, this is dumb. Mm-hmm. And I've seen pretty much all of them. Yeah. Even yeah. The, I think the last one I thought was n- wasn't great was uh, Justice League Dark. I wasn't I, impressed yeah, with that. I was one. struggling to get the that name of it, cool. but even that was fine. Yeah. It just wasn't a great portrayal of Batman. <laughs> uh, what's your, okay. I'm going to put you on the spot. What's your favorite DC animated movie? I just love the story of year one and Brian Cranston voicing commissioner Gordon. He like, for me, he is my commissioner Gordon. When I heard his voice in that character in the animated film for, for year one Batman. And I just love, love that story overall. E man, you got a favorite? I, absolutely. Uh, justice league war. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, that movie right there. Like, I, to this day, I would pay, I would pay so much money if they would just redo that as a live action. <laughs> right. Like there was no reason not to just take that same thing and adapt it into live action. Um, but yeah, Justice League War has always been one of my top favorites among you know the many others, Flashpoint and you know some of the uh, uh, Public Enemies. I like mm-hmm. that one too. So Flashpoint yeah, they were really good. They were pretty good. I, I and the Red Sun trailer. That was intense. I liked it. I mean, I remember reading the comic a long time ago. That was fun. But like, I'm really excited to see what they do with this because uh, they usually will tweak the uh, the animated movies just a little bit from the comic. So yep. I'm a little interested to see what direction they take with it. Superman with a Russian accent is very off putting, like scary kind <laughs> of. Yeah. But uh, I also noticed that Diedrich Baker is lex luther in this so he's playing right now batman in the harley quinn animated series okay he's all over the place he's got a great voice they had who did they have last they had rain wilson in um it was death of superman was i think the the animated film that released last year yeah yeah that was pretty recent actually i think is there yeah. is there a reason you think they they kicked rain off the I don't. I don't think they really the kick role? anybody off. They just find who's available and yeah. make it work. But um, my wife actually loves these movies, and I I watched Assault on Arkham with her, which is basically mm-hmm. Suicide Squad. So if great. Suicide Squad was good, so great. I think that's my favorite. Yeah. So uh, okay, let's move on to another trailer. E man, you have been all over social media talking about how excited you are for Tenet, starring John yes. David Washington. Yeah. Can you tell me what the hell is going on in this? No, no, I cannot. Okay. Um, I I don't know. I just know that Christopher Nolan loves time. He loves time travel. And I have all the confidence in the world to allow him to do whatever he wants when it comes to those factors. So, you know, Memento, Interstellar, uh, um, Inception. Mm-hmm. This is it. Like, It's almost like saying, yo, Martin Scorsese, tell me something about the Italian mafia. Christopher Nolan, you got time. That's it. I'm sold. I'm there. So we'll give you the the metronome that plays in the background in your trailer. (laughs) Go with it. it, That's it. And I mean, like what I what I really love as a guy who really loves no spoilers. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what's going on. I know that there's something intriguing and the film itself will let me know that because I remember back when Inception came out and the trailers for it did nothing to really in, like inform you yeah. about how deep that movie really was going to get. Yeah, I mean, you saw some yeah. wild stuff with the visuals, but conceptually, oh my gosh, it was something else. So I'm really intrigued to see what happens here. Uh, with Tenet and yeah I'm definitely going to make it like a full IMAX experience because Nolan does not hold back uh, when it comes to that like he will take the IMAX cameras and shoot it and make it worth every penny yeah in the trailer they they 
make sure to outline they're going to do it in 35 millimeter 70 millimeter and imax so did yep. you guys get the uh the 10 minute prologue trailer that they showed they showed it before rise of skywalker last night no i got a really short one did you get that i, I didn't get that oh my god you had a 10 minute prologue i this? swear and we were For like everyone minutes? in the theater was just like on edge watching I this i heard I'm, about this because uh, so when when Nolan did um, the Dark Knight Rises, I'm pretty sure he had the he had the same idea, but it released early. I vividly remember online they released ten minutes. Well, they pirated ten minutes and they put it out on the internet for Dark Knight Rises. But this was this seemed like the same thing where Nolan shot Nolan took the first ten minutes and he released this as a prologue for the I don't movie. Remember that at all? Holy crap! Yeah, man. it was. Everyone was like, what is this? Like, you were like, am I in the right movie right now? Because it just <laughs> kept going on. And we're like, this is awesome. So though. you know more about this movie than anybody else. Yeah. Clearly. Say, what the hell is happening? It's a lot of espionage. Okay. It seems like uh, John David Washington's enemies, whoever they are, they're the ones reversing time. Sure. And Robert Pattinson is sick at driving SUVs. That's all we know right now. I okay. forgot Robert Pattinson was in this. Yeah. Man, he's been busy. Yep. He's uh, he's trying to be like Keanu now. He's trying to get that stock up before he's Batman. Even though, Boom. even though John David Washington did a tremendous job in Black Klansman, I feel like this is going to be the movie where everyone is like, "Holy shit!" Oh, 100%. this is that guy. He's going to be in all the big blockbusters coming out, especially all the the thriller, intense kind of films it's that we're going to get. Blood, man. Yep. Yeah, it, he was it is great. Is his, does his mom act? Does anybody know? Or is it just... I, I forget. I want to say she did theater, but um, don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. oh, so like actual good acting? Not like the yeah. crap that we watch? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock. Uh, honorable mention, because this played before the Rise of Skywalker. This Top Gun 2 trailer, part two. Man, the hype on this is peaking right now. I... I'm, so I, we have a Dolby theater near us, which is just the most butt rumbling seats, like as loud as you can possibly be. Like, I can't even turn my stereo up that loud here because my wife's like, turn that shit down. And like, my house is shaking. I love those theaters. But hearing those jets fly, just like buzz the tower f for everybody and like yeah. splitting between two jets that are flying in formation and shit, dude, I was like, oh, my God, give me this movie right now. I don't even like Top Gun that much. But it's TC. It's Tom Cruise, man. When has he ever been in a movie where he's not the man, where he hasn't been the coolest guy in the shot? Tropic Thunder. That's it. Well, okay. that, that, well, yeah. And he was still kind of a man in that because he was like a millionaire. Yeah. I was going to say, it's kind of in his contract. Like, <laughs> yeah. you kind of have to be the man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, confession time. I've never seen Top Gun. Wow. wow. I know. I'll, uh, I'll take the crucifix, the, the, the stakes and, Bullets everybody gets tomato. one though like everybody gets one big blockbuster like yeah i mean I, I i totally intend on watching it before i go see top you know top gun 2 but uh yeah it's, i it i don't know i just missed the boat never got the hype you know and uh i believe it's good but it's just one of those things i gotta catch up on that's right i've never seen ghostbusters the first one <laughs> yeah Everybody I've seen actually one. parts of two, and that's it. <laughs> when I was younger, I seen Ghostbusters in parts. Yeah. So I'd always know like what happened in the middle, then I'd piece the end and then the begin. So yeah. I guess that, that happens counts. a lot when you're little though, because your attention oh, span you're like, all right, I'm gonna go play with Legos or yeah, something. But then you, you grow know? up and yeah. you realize that it's awesome and you like yeah. E man, you're close to my age. Like you yeah. you had the cartoon. Yeah. I never like enticed you to go watch the movies. Well, he's seen it. I haven't. I, really. I didn't have the cartoon. Oh, though. okay. I was Sorry. too young. I thought you were saying you hadn't seen the movies when you were younger either. No, I had Street Sharks. That was what I had. That was the animated stuff I, I had. had. Street Sharks. I, I was on that. Yeah. Gargoyle, Street Sharks, Biker yeah. Mice from Mars. Darkwing Duck. Come on. Yeah. Bring it all on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about a little bit of news proper here. We're going to get another <sighs> reboot of He Man. Um, for some reason. So this is coming from Netflix and Mattel. Mattel has like a television division, which makes sense if you think about it. Um, 
But so this is based on obviously the 80s action series, Masters of the Universe. And somehow this is not the same thing as what we're getting from Kevin Smith Mm -hmm. that I think is also going to be on Netflix. So I I don't know if they've just got some sweetheart deal here or whatever, but this is going to be totally CGI in 3D rendering. So I don't know what we're doing here. E-Man, who's asking for this? Not me. Um, The closest I cared about He-Man in my adult years is when uh, that most recent remake came out. Uh, I want to say it was a couple years ago, I think. And um, and it was the first time that I actually realized that He-Man had like a real storyline. Because as a kid, I never knew that there was like a deeper story. I just thought he went on random adventures yeah. and fought against Bellator. Like that's all I thought it was about. Pretty much. And then, uh, yeah. Didn't didn't they some, release the action figures and then build a story? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It started as a, as a toy first, and then the cartoon popped off, and even the cartoon, like, just, I don't know. I don't think it ever was really based on anything. But I just remember in the most recent cartoon, they did a backstory for Skeletor, like, how he became, you know, however he became. And I was just like, Skeletor. oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and then I just stopped watching from there. So I don't really think I'm going to have too much interest in this. This is a or pure nostalgia. Either game. one of them. Mark, have you ever seen any kind of He-Man property? Not, not yes, but not really. Do you want to borrow I, the Dolph Lundgren-led live-action movie from the '80s? Because I have it on DVD. No, I don't want it. I'm good. Gosh, <laughs> I do not want He-Man. The key, the key. I do not want. It's, it's actually not terrible. I mean, it's terrible, but <laughs> it's good. Terrible. Think it, like Hercules it, in New York. Is it really good? Look, terrible. It's or are you '80s terrible? Is what it's, you're saying? It's '80s campy. Good. Is it yeah. better than Flash Gordon? Flash. Oh. I think it is. Better? Um, man, that's tough. Those are pro- they're probably about the same level. Okay. So it's watchable. It's watchable for like the, the camp factor. You laugh at it. And there's also kind of a story jammed in there somewhere. Sounds interesting, but I don't want it still. Yeah, yeah I'm going to make you watch it. <laughs> I'd rather watch the cartoon. And I, I barely remember that either. And when I did watch it, it was just sporadically. It was an episode here or there. I really didn't know the backstory to anything. I had the sword when I was a kid that like you swung it and it made the thunder sounds. Yeah. And oh, nice. it was it was awesome. I drove my sister nuts with it because every time I hit her, it'd go <laughs> sick. You're just like, yes. All right. Uh, Variety is reporting that Dave Green, who did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, is going to direct a hybrid live action slash animation. So think like mm-hmm. Space Jam kind of, but hopefully better, like more technologically advanced. Yep. Uh, Wiley Coyote movie for Warner Brothers. OK. Do you, do you know if they're going to bring in like actual humans or is it going to be all I assume CGI if animated? they say live action animation hybrid that it's got. It, like, OK. I don't. I don't know who the I, humans would be. Were there ever humans in a Wiley e. Coyote cartoon? Uh, no, there. Whoever there ran some. Acme, I don't know. I, I think he just like the the big box full of <clears throat> TNT would show up, and that was it. I, I don't remember there actually being people in there. Mm-hmm. Nah, they were in the think, desert all the time. And what was that bird? What kind the of bird runner. was that? It was a road runner. Road runner. Is that Maybe. an actual bird? Yeah, I Is thought it? so. Yeah. Show yeah, them. absolutely. Like you could pull. It doesn't them. look like that. Okay, they're really small. They're yeah. like fast, but yeah. it's okay. not as big as an ostrich. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. It looks, it looks, it looks, looks an huge. upright coyote. No, no. Yeah, uh, yeah it, but I mean, for a while, Roadrunner was huge. Like Mopar made cars called the Roadrunner and mm-hmm. put the Roadrunner logo on them. Yeah, they had huge spoilers on the back of them. You would have loved it. It was so gay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, do, is there any interest though for, I mean, live action Warner Brothers cartoons? I don't know, but it's what we're gonna get. It's what we're getting with like Scooby Doo. Every everyone is going to start taking those old actual cartoon cartoons and making them CG animated. That's what's gonna happen, and what has been happening. Well, they did Looney Tunes back in action with Brendan Fraser. Mm-hmm. That was what fifteen years ago. Yeah, how'd that work out? Not great. Not good at all. Exactly. Not great, Bob. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I don't know. But we're getting it regardless, mm-hmm. and we'll probably go see it because we see everything. I smell a Sonic type of vibe going on. Ooh. Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, I want to get your take on this, E-Man, because we've talked about it, but uh, do you think it's a good thing that the internet bullied 
a movie studio into completely redesigning Sonic the Hedgehog? Absolutely. Um, I am 100% with, uh, I mean, we're the consumers. We are the customers. Um, you want my money. The very least you can do is actually do what I want. Now, I do think on the flip side, the audience should go watch the movie. This is what you asked for. The least you can do is go pay for it because it's not because, you know, we can't sit here and complain when movie studios do terrible things or make bad decisions. And when they finally listen, we don't show up. I mean, I didn't really care about the Sonic movie because I wasn't going to go watch it anyway. (laughs) But, you know, like I like the fact that, yes, our voices matter because, again, you want our money. The least you could do is listen to us, not just some small little focus group. And, um, you know, like, hey, power to the people. But, hey, back it up so that way they can listen to you in the future. Yeah, if this bombs, it doesn't matter what the Internet says ever going forward. Yep. But we do have another movie to talk about with some Internet bullying coming later. So we'll see how that goes. Wait, if you're not seeing this movie, what movie are you going to see that week? Do you know? That's Valentine's what, what? Day, right? I think so. Is that when it is? King's Man. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, and there's one other really big release coming out Valentine's Day. It's not uh, Bloodshot, is it, with Vin Diesel? Is that it? No, oh, I think that's further out. Okay. Damn. I should remember that, but I know there's there are three big movies coming out that week. Uh, I know so there's like some one. romantic movie coming out. I I, I got to take my wife to go see that. I think it's, I don't know. It's some love romantic thing or whatever. With so Seth, Seth Rogen? <laughs> no. Where he marries not the either. president somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got like the portrait or picture. I don't know. It looks really sappy, but my wife likes that stuff. So. <laughs> can you, you can hear that? <laughs> yeah. All right, good. I heard it. <laughs> okay. Um, we don't generally venture into this side of the news, but I thought it was kind of interesting at least. Uh, two guys have been indicted by a federal grand jury, which means they're screwed. Mm-hmm. Like there's no getting out of this. They're, they're going on plea deals just to like, rat on everybody else but basically they were hosting two of the largest illicit stream services uh called i stream it all and there's one other one that i'm blanking on the name for jetflix okay okay so they had more than 118,000 television episodes and 10,000 movies Jeez. for a small monthly fee that's more than what netflix currently has in their their catalog wow and both of these guys just got their websites shut down. And this was out of Las Vegas because, of course, it was. Oh, my God. <laughs> but uh, they were also uh, hosting another website. Jetflix had over 200,000 pirated TV episodes. So all this has been shut down in the last couple of weeks. Mm. Now, I know that we're all above board, but we're not going to heck. We pay for our streaming Dude. services and television and movies R- all the time. Ridiculous amounts of money. But on the off chance that either of you ever stumble across these websites, like, like, yeah, you know, just type in torrent on Google by accident. I don't know what that word means. Not that I would, (laughs) but never search for movies on Google. Always use DuckDuckGo because they'll show you the actual links. I've heard. I've heard this. I I don't know. I don't know what DuckDuckGo is. It's It's a search engine. It's a search engine that is not... uh, The devil. Okay. Is that fair? I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you go there, I mean, if you just stumble up upon it, um, that's, that's probably a better place to find those. So why would you search something through there? Google hides those things. Oh, Duck, okay. Go doesn't. Okay. And also they don't track your search history. Gotcha. Also, I might've, I might've heard Bing would also be pretty loose, but that's just speculation. Speculation, man. Yeah. Purely. Uh, no one uses Bing, though, so never mind. That's the meme, though, is like verbal meme. You Google how to kill yourself, and on, on Google, it pops up like the suicide hotline number, mm-hmm. and on Bing, it's like a million ways to kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Reddit threads. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so. No, you don't hear about this stuff at all, really, nowadays, and I, you know it's out there because yeah. There's, yeah. there's applications like I was – out the other day and a girl that wasn't even that big into pop culture she's like yeah i uh she like stumbled into 
telling me something she knew she shouldn't be saying. And she's like, yeah, I saw that. I saw that movie last week at home. And I'm just like, it's in theater. She's like, yeah, but I was, I was using something. I'm like, we're using Cody. She's like, yeah, everyone uses like a Cody or something now, but you never hear about. Except they shut Cody down mostly. Did they recently? For no, it's, it's all about the sources that go into it. Most of them have been shut down. Okay. It's a it's a constant thing from the MPAA to go in and sh- and shut down providers. Okay, so it sounds like they're actually revving this up and they've been shutting down a lot of these. It's, I mean, it's taking money out of their pockets. Of course, that's what they're going to focus okay. on. So, I mean, there's still where there's a will, there's a way. The pirates will always be out there. You just all I'm saying is be careful out there. How many streaming streaming services do you have, E-Man? Cuz I know I have Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney Plus, DC Universe. Oh God, I forgot about DC. And uh, they didn't shut that down yet. Oh, it's coming. No, not, not yet. They just came out with that <laughs> okay. Harley Quinn animated show. Pretty soon it'll be uh, HBO Max. And yeah, I was gonna say. Go I thought there. they merged it. They they probably will. HBO. I have yeah. that. I have Showtime, but that's through like Xfinity when you sign up. But anyways, do you have do you have like upwards of five I, or six? I mean, I think what we got Netflix, Amazon, uh, Disney Plus. Do you have Hulu? cable? Still got cable. I don't wow. have Hulu yet. Yet, uh, cable's about to go in like a hot second. Um, Agree. But I get rid of that before I got rid of any of my streaming services. I mean, that's that's all I got for now. We just got like a brand new TV, and you know, and the other thing is, I don't even have time because I'm usually going to watch a movie or something else anyway. So yeah. my Netflix queue is like probably in the thousand, ten thousands hundred thousands from like oh six so what, what's the show the first show up in your netflix queue right now it was witcher okay yeah. is there any show that is like upwards of 10 years old that's up that's in the queue right now jeez if it is i can't remember you know what it is <sighs> i don't know if i want to admit this uh <laughs> inglorious <laughs> bastards okay ah okay okay that, i get it it's been just sitting there, and I'm like, "Yep, I'm a uh, today is gonna be the. Ooh, what's yeah. that? No, so get to it though, man. It's worth it. I oh, I know. I, I'm a Tarantino fan, which is why I'm so ashamed because I'm like, come on now. This, is that the only Tarantino part. movie you haven't seen? That and Reservoir Dogs. Oh wow, wow. I know those are the only two that have always been like on the shame and must see list. Hey. Everything else, hand up. Watch never them all. seen Jackie Brown. I've never seen that one. Wow. It's on Netflix. Okay. It's in my queue. <laughs> so I haven't seen that one. Also, yeah, the, the one, it. the show that you, that's been in my queue forever that I'm probably never going to watch is Peaky Blinders. Yeah. I love I've that I've heard show. really good things about that. I love it. You got to watch it with sub- subtitles. It's one of those. 100%. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Killian Murphy, dude. I, they just have the strongest British accents. You're like, and Tom Hardy's in it. And he, uh, his, his regular accent is unreal to begin with. And him just getting into that British accent. You're like, I have no idea what you're saying right now. Gotcha. What did they cover his face with? His face is covered with actually nothing. He has a huge top hat though. That doesn't make any sense. It's Tom Hardy. You got to cover his face. I know you're, they're not covering his face. Okay. It's crazy. Uh, last bit of news and then we can move on. Um, Jackass four is coming. I don't know how. Uh, because they're all sober now and I don't know who they're going to convince to like hang upside down from their balls or whatever, but I'm kind of excited for this. They should just get stunt doubles (laughs) and make it like, (laughs) make it obvious. These are stunt doubles, but act like they like they're in on it and just have no idea. Just yeah. Throw in stunt doubles. Who cares? That'll work. So, E-Man, I assume you've seen all the Jackass movies. Uh, I saw the first one. And, like, I used Don't, to watch no, the no, show. No. Don't act like you're better than us. <laughs> you know they're funny. Oh, I mean, I didn't say they were not funny. I just... I don't know. I think it was, like, Jackass 3D or something that kind of turned me off. And I was yeah. like, I'm done. Like, I'm done. Yeah. So, I, I, I watched the show. I watched the first one, a little bit of the second one. And I, it just kind of lost me from there. The, the stunt that will always stand out to me is Steve-O getting in the porta potty 
and them shooting it up in the air like by bungee cords <laughs> and just him getting covered and then he gets out and he starts chasing people around when he's covered in this like mixture of waste and blue goop ugh. and ugh but I will it will never escape my mind so they made a lasting impression I guess the, the mo I I hated but was so intrigued by the cringe worthy ones where there's less going into it like the entertainment factor when it was like wasabi snooters with steve-o where he went into a sushi bar and just snorted wasabi or like where he took he took paper and did the paper cuts in between his toe oh. toe webbings like that shit i was like oh my god oh. you're insane this is he would just be so disturbing whippets in the background yeah he i don't know how he's gonna do it because yeah he's he's supposedly clean off drugs off alcohol everything and he's getting older so anything he does is gonna hurt for an extra two weeks now who was it that put a like a hot wheels car in a condom and put it in their butt and went to the doctor to get x-rays that was uh what? that was the that was steve-o no i don't think it was it was either that or party one boy. Of the wild boys guys it might have been party boy okay. the other guy that's enough reminiscing about gross things that <laughs> you'll act we <laughs> talked about this a few episodes ago i man you'll like this they did a skit that i forgot even happened it was in the the 30 minute episodes where they got big on mtv it was one of the first episodes they did they had brad pitt in on this in on this stunt where brad pitt was in line outside at some like ice cream parlor bar whatever thing in la and they came up on him in a black van. They jumped out of the van and they had like masks on and everything to make it look like Brad Pitt was getting abducted. And they throw him in the, in the, they throw him in the van and Brad Pitt's yelling like, stop these guys. Like, and like six of them get out and toss him in there. And so they, they run up with a camcorder and this guy pretended like he was just a pedestrian that was filming whatever God knows what, but he's like, what just happened to all these people on the street? They're like, Brad Pitt just got kidnapped. Like they were dead serious. They had no idea what was going on. And Brad Pitt was in on the whole thing. It was great. And not one person called the police, huh? Not, <laughs> I guess they were all stunned. And when Brad Pitt get, the best part is when Brad Pitt got into the van, one of the jackass guys was like, wow, you are a really good actor. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, I know. <laughs> well, on that note. That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, best. 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 We the best. Worst, worst, worst. Oh, the worst. She's the worst person in the world. Huge skank, terrible. But thank you. All right, man. I'll give you some time to think about this because you might not have mm-hmm. one ready. Um, okay. I assume you've seen The Watchmen. <sighs> not yet. It's okay if you haven't. I'm not gonna I judge you. Totally want to though. I interviewed. Crap. What's the guy's name? The guy who does, he was in the Incredible Hulk. He was the thinker. He's in Watchmen. The thinker? Uh, he was in the first, the 08 uh, Incredible Hulk. Fuck, what's his name? Tim something? Yeah, I'd have to look that up. But uh, you, you'll, he's one of those guys you know him when you see I'll him. I'll see his face and be like, oh, of course. That guy, um, exactly. But if you have seen The Watchmen... You've uh-huh. seen this this scene that everybody on the internet is, just, is referring to him as Lube Man. He was this guy in a bright silver suit, and he's running away from Regina King in this one scene, and he just like pours oil all over himself, and he drops down to the ground, and he slides and turns his head, and he slides into a sewer grate. <laughs> and I have seen that. I have seen of it. Of course you have. It's it's a meme all over the internet. Yeah. Wait, you haven't it's seen pretty- Watchmen yet? I have not. Not Ooh. yet. So, the guy's name is Tim Blake Nelson. Okay. Tim yeah, yeah of Nelson. course. I should have known. I interviewed that. him for Just Mercy, and I was talking to him, and I was like, dude, you've been in a lot of comic book-related stuff lately. You know, and he was just like, yeah, you know, I used to be an Incredible Hulk and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, "What? whatever happened with that? Like, you know, that's, that's the MCU. Like, you, you <laughs> should be the thinker, you know, or leader or whatever. And uh, and he was just like, yeah, Marvel's just not going to do it. Like, they're not going to do another Hulk movie. It's just not going to happen. But you should definitely go watch Watchmen. I think you'll really like Watchmen. I was like, He's actually okay. really, really good in Watch. He's very deadpan. He's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it. But anyways, <clears throat> Lube Man. Yeah. Uh, 
I thought 100% that for sure had to be like CG or something. Yeah. It's not. He that was a stunt man. Really did that. Regina like King was, was talking in an interview and she, okay, so here's the quote. She said, it was wild. It was wild to see the guy just go do it. I was like, yo, that's bananas. <laughs> and it was cold as shit that day. So he's out there in this polyurethane suit, whatever he had on. He was like, he did it. And he was like, that's amazing. They built that little drain so he could slide on in. But yes, that was an actual stunt. So wow. holy shit, stunt man. They're still out there. They're still doing it. Whoever that stunt man is, I don't know. But you are my best man alive this week because that's an amazing stunt. The the craziest part is that the inlet or the, yeah the inlet the sewer drain. It is just it's it's not like an oversized. It's one. not it's like just, yeah it's not the it oversized inlet it's like where Pennywise it's, looking at out at you from the sewer. That's an oversized one. This was an actual like the ones you'll see on the streets of Chicago where he just slid right through it. I'm like oh my god, and I thought it was all CGI animated. So did I. It's crazy. Apparently not. Shit's wow. crazy. All right, Mark, who's your best man alive? It is actually um, best little girl alive. Her name is Caitlin Hardy. So she's a five-year-old student at, at an elementary school in California. Anyways, she raised some money selling. It seems like I think she was selling coffee, which is kind of weird, but maybe she was just getting in that uh, stream of income from all those people going to work. But for like two weeks straight, she was selling coffee, cookies, all this kind of stuff to pay off the negative balance for over 100 students at her elementary school. Nice. So, E-Man, I know you have three three girls of your own. This is yeah. me growing up and knowing like what those elementary school lunches meant to me, those box shaped pizzas and the taquitos and all that stuff. And this girl going out of her way to do Be that, low. to raise money and pay off those negative balances. First of all, w what's going on at the school though, <laughs> where you have over a hundred kids with negative balances, like Maybe right? if we can afford to feed prisoners in for-profit prisons, we should be able to pay for our kids lunches, but that's just me. That's, that's a good point. Dumb. My but, daughter uh, did something similar. She didn't yeah. raise money, but what she did was uh, in her middle school, um, kids would just like waste their food sometimes, you know, yeah. like they don't eat apple, they don't eat this, they don't eat that. And the school, you know, they're obliged. They have to like throw all that stuff away. Mm -hmm. So what she did was like she created like this program where it's basically like they set up a table where like if you just don't want stuff, you just leave it on that table oh. and people, people could just come and eat it. And it's a great idea. You know, like if you're short on your lunch balance or whatever. Yeah. You can just go to the table and grab whatever other people are going to toss out anyway. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff. That's very nice. I wonder how much they're charging for elementary school lunches. Cause I think when I went, like if you went one lunch in the negative, like each lunch was maybe like three dollars. Does that seem right? They were pretty cheap, right? I want to say I mean, probably more than well, I know what I know, pay. actually. I, I'm paying like I don't know, fifty bucks like every couple of months here or there. Okay. So I'm assuming it's like two, three bucks per Yeah, okay. So it's yeah. been around the same, it seems like. Huh. Yeah. No, that's a great idea that your daughter had. Wow. Yeah, we're proud of her. All right, E-Man, you got anything? Or I got one more, <laughs> just in I case. Got, I got one. Um, you know, take it however you like. But uh, <laughs> my best man alive right now is Ryan Johnson, the director. Because okay. he is making his rounds. And in my opinion, proving people right, or pro proving some people wrong about how he was right about Luke Skywalker and uh, the whole Star Wars stuff all this time. So I am totally on board with everything he's been saying about Star Wars, about not pandering and catering to fans first when you're trying to make a movie. Um, and he's just winning. He's just been winning the awards and uh, winning the day for me. Plus Knives Out was awesome. And Knives Out was awesome. So yeah, totally. Okay, Ryan we'll get Jeff. into it, but was Rise of Skywalker catering to all those fans? And I think I know what E-Man so? thinks. So, so, <laughs> yes. So, it we there yet? We, I, we I even had that vibe. I, I got, one, I I got one more thing, then I promise we'll get to Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so last week, E-Man, if you didn't catch it, we talked about how a certain workplace was in implementing a smell check to uh, make sure that if you're in the bathroom, you're doing bathroom things uh instead of just sitting there on your phone and checking oh this has made its rounds on the internet this week 
someone is inventing, quote unquote, a toilet that slopes down at about a 13 degree angle that makes you, you're, you're comfortable. You like, you can stand it for like five minutes. Then you're after that, your legs kind of start to shake. It's quiet. like doing a wall sit. Yeah. Oh, right. God. Oh, that's so terrible. Whoever this is, is the worst person on earth. And there Clearly. are some reports saying like, oh, it's just a concept. Maybe it's not going to happen. We need to stop these people. Wow. Yes. This is like the only time that I have to myself ever. <laughs> like, I, I need this. You can't take this away from me. And E-Man, you got three daughters and a wife. I can't even fathom. <laughs> Dude, that's my man cave. So uh, how dare that person? Violet, like, I feel attacked at this point. Like, this is, I've always wanted to actually come up with a device that would reduce um, the, uh, the, the phenomenon of your legs falling asleep. You know, while you're in the toilet. So like a lay down pooping apparatus. I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's a cushion. I don't know if it's like a massager thing for your your thighs or whatever to keep the blood circulation going. But anything that allows me to be more comfortable in the bathroom, I'm for that. Maybe it's like those gravity boots things where you like hook your feet up to the ceiling and like you hold on to monkey bars and you just hang there. It actually do its work. It might be a a case of just putting in like some sort of divot into the seat itself. Yeah. And because I think what's happening is there's blood flow that's getting restricted. So it might be one of the arteries in your leg or something. Your femoral artery. You figure out where that exact point is for a lot of people where their legs start falling asleep. And yeah, you can make shift the uh, toilet seat where you can Did resolve we just start it. a toilet company i guess we might have oh my god smithers Look, over here wanna... smithers over here actually doesn't poop on weekends just so he could poop on company time on i don't Monday. i don't ever poop for free i just <laughs> yeah. build beer every he day. holds it in no matter <laughs> how rough it may be never poop That's for free the dedication right there dedication yep what just happened <laughs> well i think we're about to become billionaires so yeah um well, this billionaire just spe- spilled beer all over himself. I'm going to play this drop and get some paper towels. I'll start working on the product design. I'll do. I'll mock up something for us. I, I'm willing that to works. test the product. All right. Here. All right. You didn't hear that uh, new drop yet, have you, E Man? No, I have not. Did you like it? Speaking of, I nice. mean, speaking of the last uh, topic we were just talking about, so um, classic. All right, so Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker. That is why you're here. I'll kick this off by saying, right now we're at, if this is updated, a 57 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, 86 percent from fans, which isn't too surprising. Um, in my opinion, they made a lot of those fans happy by how they put this movie together Mm -hmm. in the fact that they did a lot of fan servicing, whether or not a lot of us liked it, but they did. They threw in whoever, whoever they could to make a, try to make us happy at least. Um, I can take that back. Go ahead. So this was kind of a, I don't know. I want to say combative production process because originally this was supposed to be Colin Trevorrow who did my and E-Man's favorite movie ever, Jurassic World. (laughs) Um, just kidding it was terrible <laughs> uh but he got fired a few years ago two years ago actually uh because he apparently couldn't work with kathleen kennedy who is the head of ah. mm-hmm. production at i want to say not just uh lucasfilm she's she's high up at disney correct yeah so they didn't get along they fired him brought back jj abrams so he did the same. original movie in this in this trilogy didn't the same thing happen with lord and uh Lord Miller? Miller? Yeah. I think you're right. Oh, yeah, that was the last movie, though, right? That was for Solo. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, of course. So they brought Abrams back? I thought he was just yeah. next up, because I know with the no. with all the Star Wars films, no. they had their directors already kind of set, right? They brought him back. So it was J.J. Okay. Yeah, Abrams, no Ryan yeah. Johnson. Uh, Lord Miller was supposed to do Solo. Then they right. brought in Ron Howard, who finished the movie. Right. I thought Solo was kind of underrated, honestly. It wasn't a great movie, but everybody shit on it. It was fine. Mm-hmm. So I, I, it was bad. <laughs> okay, you didn't like it. Enough. <laughs> um, either way, they threw three hundred million dollars at this because Disney, um, and it looks like it. it mm-hmm. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous film. Uh, if you're going to go see it, I absolutely recommend you see it in Dolby or IMAX because that's that's how it's made to be seen. Definitely. So, so. I guess a little bit of story on this. Emperor Palpatine has inexplicably come back. 
uh, <laughs> because this is the Star Wars universe and you don't need an explanation for anything. Uh, our heroes and heroines have to search the galaxy for stuff because this is a Star Wars movie and that's how they work. And some stuff happens and we find out some other shit and they end the trilogy of trilogies. Okay. So, E-Man, uh, I'm going to give you the floor. This is our non-spoiler talk for right now. But right. give me your overall verdict. What did you like? What did you hate? Um, so overall take, I think that they put pandering uh, and catering to fans um, over good storytelling. Um, and let me just make a very clear uh, distinction here. Um, fan service is not a problem. Like, that's totally okay to put in little things that you know fans of a series is, you know, are going to enjoy. Um, what this was was more of like a knee jerk reaction to certain things. Um, so, for example, if a certain segment of the fan base didn't like a character, well, the fan service in this case was you won't get much of that character. Or if you didn't like this plot structure, we'll go ahead and just literally backtrack it from the last movie. Mm -hmm. um, that's not really the good type of fan service that's needed. So that was a very big problem for me um, because I, I, I just I felt like it detracted from the story. Uh, the writing to me in this movie was terrible. Um, it just was not... It felt more of like what happened with Justice League when there was pressure put on DC and Warner to be more light and not so dark and put some of that Marvel fun into things. Um, and they just catered into that. They sacrificed their creativity and their angle. And um, we got Justice League, you know, and yeah, we got Justice League. So <laughs> for, for Rise of Skywalker... Um, to me, I think what ended up happening was because of that compromise job that they did, yeah, we totally get some like entertaining things. Uh, the visuals are amazing. The action sequences, all the right stuff in Star Wars mm -hmm. is there. There's no question about that. Um, I, I just think that what they ended up doing was the main purpose of this movie was to end the Skywalker saga. And they really only ended Force Awakens. You don't even need The Last Jedi because that whole movie was compromised in this as well. So Abrams got to conclude Abrams and that was it. So I feel like this movie did not really accomplish its primary goal in being a huge closure, you know, for the entire saga. Um, and, you know, if you can't, because, because of like many of the un- resolved questions that it left you know left wide open it kind of defeats the purpose you know like why are we trying to conclude something and we're introducing new characters and we're introducing new plot lines like mm -hmm. it's counterproductive so um as i said in my review it's entertaining but disappointing i think it's a pretty good description <clears throat> uh, mark your thoughts yeah so being the the guy that's not that big into S Star Wars. I'm actually just starting to watch A New Hope. Well, I just finished A New Hope. I am at... You just um, finished shitting all over A New Hope. No, I was shitting on the lightsaber battle, which is actually... Okay. the. I'll get into what I liked about this movie, right. and that is I really enjoyed the scenes with Rey and Kylo Ren going at it. Okay. I thought those were some of the better scenes, the action scenes. To clarify, going at it means sword fighting. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to that later. Some some awkwardness I even picked up on. I was like, yeah, no, uh, I don't know about that. Um, I thought it was just... It, it skipped around too much. It was... It, it, it didn't let you build emotion or really get into um, into certain scenes because it was just jumping around all the pl all over the place, in my opinion. Overall, it was I just wasn't impressed. And even even though I'm not a huge Star Wars guy, I was able to to pick out some things that I just thought were a little over the top and. At times, like I said, I was just felt a little awkward because I'm like, why did they even do this sort of thing? But we can get into that in spoilers. I just overall wasn't that impressed with it. OK, uh, I guess I'm probably the most bullish on this movie then because I, I recognize all of the flaws that you, you both have pointed out, mm -hmm. but I still really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and 
<clears throat> you say that you're not a Star Wars guy, and I kind of claim the same thing, but at the same time, things would come up in the movie, and I'd be like, oh, that's because of whatever, like um, the beacon that they're looking for. In the new Star Wars game, there's something similar where like you need mm-hmm. the force and you can project something out of uh, an object that'll give you a map and all this stuff. And like apparently I'm a bigger Star Wars guy than I, I thought I was. And they connected to the Mandalorian, right? Did Which I, um, that's a yeah, spoiler. there was there's a are we going into that? This is it's not really a spoiler. Like she yeah. heals this big snake monster. Race yeah. heals this big snake monster and mm-hmm. they kind of tease know. that the force yeah. is, the force can do that in the Mandalorian. Yep. So right. I think that's the only connection. That, so far, that's the only that's thing. All I mean. I and they hinted that in episode two, also, of The Mandalorian. And then they just showed it in episode seven. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, my, my Honestly, my biggest problem with, about this is that they just brought Palpatine back and they just completely blew past like how that was possible. He's been dead forever. Like I know that this this is a universe of clones and, and shit, but like that's not. It, it just doesn't. It doesn't make sense. So and, no, and to, to not even mention it in passing, mm-hmm. just be like, yeah. oh, it turns out they they have a hundred clones of him for some reason. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't even fucking mention it. They're just like, nope, he's it. back. It's fine. We accept it. What was the last movie we had Palpatine? Because I'm up next is Attack of the Clones for me. Is, no. uh, is, well, okay. Uh, so when was which, the last time we saw him in this? Which order are you going in? I, I'm release order. Or no, not release. Okay. Chronological order. Chronological? No, because you didn't watch the. You didn't watch the uh, the pre. You and McGregor trilogy, the Anakin Skywalker trilogy first. Did you? You're watching the originals. No, I'm. I'm speaking. I'm watching them from release, but I'm talking chronologically. When is the last time we saw Palpatine? Well, in that case, were, yeah. In in that case, the last Star Wars movie, like the number six. Six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so right. that's where he gets killed by Vader. Yes. Okay. Um. But it just doesn't make any sense. And it's no like for him to be dormant forever. And like, he's, he's like, Oh, well, Snoke was me. Dur, dur, dur. And they, the audacity they have to show not, not only just put him in this movie, but in the trailer, the first trailer outright, they were just like, that's obviously emperor Palpatine. Mm-hmm. They just slid his voice in there. Like we weren't going to fucking know who that was. Like, obviously that's him. And they just they're so brazenly just like, it's fine. Don't, just ignore it. Nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Just like, shh, 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 it's fine. It bothered me so much. That's my yeah. biggest problem with this movie. Of course, they had the jumps all over the place. They introduced new characters that don't really go anywhere. That's Star Wars. I'm fine with that. Like, I've seen so much Star Wars at this point that it's, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not looking for a, a cohesive plot because I haven't seen one in any Star Wars movie ever, but I still enjoy them. So I guess that's that's my take on this. I would say that the acting in this one is probably the best out of any Star Wars movie ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Agreed. Even though Adam Driver basically just quivers for 90 minutes. And Finn he, just screams half the time. Finn does a lot of screaming. His hair looks better this time, though. Uh, he looks good. He's just screaming at every chance he gets. Yeah. Oscar Isaacs is a dreamboat. He's a fun yeah. guy. He's uh he's very handsome. I'm I'm a fan. Mm. So, um, but other than that, man, I I don't I don't really know what else to say. Like, it, I enjoyed it. it. It's fine. Um, maybe when they do another movie, because they absolutely damn sure well will after this one makes a billion dollars, because it definitely will. Um, maybe they'll start to explain like where it came from or in like the novelization of the movie, like they'll get some convoluted plot, but it's just, it, it drove me nuts. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. Did you like it better than force awakens? <sighs> Probably not. Okay. What about you, E-Man? Hell no, man. This no. is at the bottom of my list. Really? Um, Shit. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's not good. I mean, it's not good because I know Ryan was saying that it's fine, but, you know, I think that with a movie of this magnitude, with this much heritage, mm-hmm. this much pop culture cachet, you can't just give just fine. You just can't. I mean, and let's be honest. 
Star Wars is not a complicated franchise to do. You know, if you're a director, it, it's it's literally like here's the entire formula. Add in just a little bit of water and crack an egg. <laughs> and lightsabers like it, seriously like a lot of it, you know i watched everything in chronological order you know I, right before going into this i i literally took 48 hours and binged all eight movies right before uh wow. you tried yeah, hard so then i tried really really hard okay and did you watch um, clone wars like the animated stuff right that was i've been watching the- some of it but i couldn't you know squeeze okay. all of that in uh, Clone Wars is awesome, by the way. So anybody who's even remotely interested, j- check that out. Spin. Please do. Um, but yeah, like watching everything in chronological order, I'm like, yo, there are so many things that repeat themselves, whether it's intentionally or not. It's very formulaic. So it's kind of <laughs> hard to like screw this up. And I thought that like when they were coming in with the new trilogy, all you had to do with force awakens was of course you're introducing this for a new generation Mm -hmm. got it you're gonna copy a new hope you know it's gonna be very similar we got that when last jedi came out it was kind of like hey we're about to go in a new direction i know it rubs some people the wrong way personally i really enjoyed it because i was like oh my gosh after six movies we're finally gonna do something different and i was all for that and then you know uh once uh rise of uh, skywalker came out it was like well nope just kidding we're gonna go back to what we did before and we'll still drop the ball with certain things i mean i'm sorry if this is a conclusion you can't introduce new characters endgame didn't do that because endgame was like no we're going to wrap it up Mm -hmm. for this story and then of course in other stories We'll bring in new characters, new stories, and stuff like that. Yeah. Game of Thrones didn't even bother doing that. Endgame you know? is a cogent storytelling, you know. And and the it, purpose. It's interesting that you, you, okay, but you can't say you have to end on a good note and then reference Game of Thrones. I was just saying that Game of Thrones, I didn't say they did it well. I'm just saying that they closed it out. They okay. ended the story. They didn't leave you dangling with like, wait, what happened to this person? Or what happened? Mm-hmm. Who is this new part? They didn't do that. They just closed the story. That's fair. It sucked, but they did that. And mm-hmm. with Endgame, Kevin Feige was always saying, I want it to end the way Return of the Jedi ended. And they had one, J.J. Abrams had one job, and that was just to end everything with the Skywalker saga. And I don't think that they, I don't think he committed enough to that. I think he was just partial to his own movie force awakens. He wanted to like close that out. Um, there were barely any, I would say payoffs from the earlier prequels or even like the original uh, trilogy. There was no payoff. The, the closest we got with the payoff was maybe at the end with like the lion King voices or whatever. You know, in the sky. <laughs> that, that, that's as close as we get. You know, so it's kind of like. Uh, Do you think this was more of me? Abrams not wanting to close out uh, uh, close out the saga, or was it Disney being like, "We're going to bring in these new characters because this is a money grab, and even though we're closing it out, we're going to be able to pick back up immediately in the next year or so and make I, more and more money." I a hundred percent believe it's more Abrams, okay. mainly because. A lot of the new characters that we saw, they added nothing to potential entry. Yeah, a new show, you know, like okay. the um, the ex star, the the ex stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sorry, she felt like a plant. Yeah, she felt like, hey, you're a stormtrooper. Do you need a romantic interest? What's her name? Jana, what? Jana. What's her name? Yeah, Something? I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. This is you just came out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, you just so happen to meet Finn, and you guys have all this stuff in common? No way. Like, what kind of whack-ass, <laughs> black, blind date was this? Like, this was terrible. It was Fair. a terrible match game type of deal. So, yeah, I 100% that was Abrams. Um, and again, I think that this goes into the fan pandering, mm-hmm. because one thing that with the story that doesn't go anywhere are all the romantic interests. Who is romantically interested in who? 
I don't know. <laughs> well, let's, spoil- let's hold on to one of those spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just saying. I'm yeah. just saying. The, no, the, get the into it. In this, I have no idea where anything goes with anyone. So, do you really need romance in these movies, though? No. Because no. I don't think that you do, and I think you're definitely onto something when you're talking about J.J. Abrams writing this specifically to appease a certain fan base. Because otherwise, it would have been Colin Trevorrow, and that's, in my opinion, that's why he was out. Okay. But I think with that, we all have our opinions on this. We've all got it out there, and as far as we can go without spoiling it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to throw a spoiler warning up on the screen. I'm going to say spoilers right now at this point in the podcast. Should we rate? We should rate it, right? Are we going to rate it? I say see it. Okay, I'm going to say stream it. You, you okay? Before before I let you answer, you I know. know it's hard because it's a Star Wars movie. Star Wars movie. Everybody's going to ruin it for you. You have to go see this. Go fine. Go see like, it, even whatever. if you even if you hate it, hate watch it. But hate watch yeah. it in a theater. Go on a Tuesday at like 10 a.m. when it'll cost you eight bucks. You don't you don't agree. No, I agree. But if you're in my boat where you're just not the biggest Star Wars guy, okay, go stream it. E man, what do you think? <laughs> no, I agree with that. I mean, that was uh that was my own recommendation for people is like, look, your eight movies at the minimum invested at this point. Um, so you're not about to let those go to waste. Mm-hmm. There's no need to let the uh the internet spoil it for you, which they will inevitably. Yep. So yeah, I would and, and yeah, the visuals are I mean, the visuals are worth watching mm-hmm. on a big screen. Like it's again, it's still entertaining to watch. You know, you're still gonna have some eyegasms here and there and some really cool things happen. Um, but yeah, I would say like matinee, low expectations you'll probably have a much better time than I did. Man, I, I'm i surprised that I'm the strongest on this movie. That's We need we, we needed Chuck on. If we, we had Chuck, Chuck on here, do you, are you familiar with uh, Chuck Lode Comics? He's a huge Star Wars nerd, and he, he definitely loves it. He loves movie. it. No, like yeah. he, he's been posting about how much he loves it. I, I would love to sit down and talk to him about it because I like I'm sure that we would agree on some things and disagree on others, yeah. but I, I would have loved to have like a, a four way here to. So completely. I, I've, yeah. you know, I'm in a comic group online and, um, you know, one of my one of my friends online will he's like a huge Star Wars fan. I mean, he's read every piece of literature, played every video game like he just knows all of it. And he also just loved it. And I was just sitting here thinking like, well, of course you did. You have all this super, you know, like extra supplemental information to help piece things together for you. And that's why things make more sense for you. And for me, I'm coming in. I don't even know if you can call me a casual, but like, you know, I, I've seen all the movies. And like I said earlier, like I've seen some of Clone Wars, the animated series, but that's it. I haven't played the games. I haven't, you know, read any comics. I don't know anything about the old, you know, uh, universe that's not canon or anything. Mm-hmm. So all I can go off of is the what movies. they tell me in the movies. Yeah. And my my argument to to my friend was kind of like, you can't sit here and say that, you know, like I'm missing out on something or, you know, the movie is better than than what I'm making it out to be because this is supposed to be the entry point. Like if if the movies for the most basic average person can't get you in, if they yeah. can't really wow you, then what the hell is the point of everything else? Mm-hmm. No one is about to sit here and be like, man, Rise of Skywalker was kind of mediocre. I better go grab that novel that tells me all the extra nitbit information. No one's going to do that. You know, now, yeah. if you had an amazing, epic movie, that is going to lead people into wanting to see all the extra stuff. So for me, it's kind of like if the movie drops the ball, everything else doesn't matter. I don't care about what, what's in some comic book that gives you the little background info. Like, yeah. the basic stuff turned me off. So that makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's, look, I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm not going to argue with you and tell you it was a good movie. I'm just going to tell you that I enjoyed it. And that's sure. that's really all I can say about it. So sounds like we need and Christopher right. Nolan to do a movie, a Star Wars movie. Yes. Okay. He's he's big. He's big with time and like oh continuous timeline of Star Wars and piecing everything together. He'd be great. All right. So from here, here is what where I will throw up the spoiler warning. 
because we, we were a little premature with that earlier, a little premature spoiler warning. But All right. we got some shit to talk about. So okay. spoilers from here on out. Look at that. Now we have a spoiler warning. All right. Um, <sighs> you want to go in order to the kiss? Movie? <laughs> Why did she have to say, I'm a Skywalker, or, or say Ray Skywalker at the end? I'm just like, the kiss was one thing. And now are you just like, you think you're his cousin or something? Like, what's Everything going on? about that was so wrong. That's, from- that's knee jerk. I'm telling you, that's that reaction crap. Nothing in the story, nothing in the story would feed into us believing that that was like a genuine thing. I like, was like, did I, about it. did I, I mean, miss something? Because we had the, no. st- we, I didn't miss anything. Okay. No, no <laughs> like, outside of, <laughs> outside of maybe Kylo's, you know, shirtless scene, like, was that the turning point? W- w- was that when Ray was like, you know what? This might be more than the force. I mean, that did not turn me on. And I, <laughs> it didn't turn, I, don't, I don't know who it turned on, but I'm just saying the story never gave us any real buildup, you know, yeah. kind of like, you know, if you're watching A New Hope, if you're watching, uh, you know, The Empire Strikes Back, you see the flirtation between Leia and yeah. Han, you know, like that's genuine. It didn't happen immediately. It happened over time. This whole thing with Kylo and Rey it was like, first of all, Snoke or Palpatine, whoever you want to call it, forced this bond between them to happen. And the whole time they were either trying to kill each other or get under each other's skin. And and it's kind of like, was that a, a, a friend kiss? I Thank you for saving my life. No, and friend kisses don't have tongue. Yeah, they don't. That shit was weird. And it was very it, weird. So when I, there was a lot of like, I could just tell when I sat down in the theater, there was a lot of those Star Wars people who, you know, they were into the canon through all. Damn it. I meant to ask what your theater experience, like, were there people there dressed up in shit? I I was at the, I went to the same theater you've been going to huge IMAX like opening night. Yeah. So no recliners, nothing, just regular seats with a shit ton of people. And I was. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. It's crazy to think like theaters have no recliners. We've we've come to that. Where is it? Yeah, it's first 2020 world almost. problems. Anyways, there was there there were of course Star Wars people, and I was just looking at the like quickly looking for an expression of these people's faces while the movie was going on, and when they kiss, I'm like, did I miss something? Because you had like, you had some of like the girlfriends with their boyfriends who you knew they like watched them growing up and that's how they related. And she was so into the movie and she's like, when they kiss, she's like, Oh yeah. Mm, That makes sense. And like clapping. I'm like, did I miss something? Like I thought that was weird as hell. Is there some backstory or was there some flirtation flirting going on that I missed? Cause I don't think that shit happened. But you had all those people up in their seats like, mm, that makes sense, kind of look on their face. And I'm like, I, it didn't make sense for me. So I had no idea what was going on. I heard several people audibly in my theater say, what the fuck? Really? Yes. <laughs> I had the opposite of that. I was thinking it, but I didn't say it. I was thinking it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So at no point during any of these three movies was there any sexual tension between them. And they've hated each other the entire fucking trilogy. And you're just like, oh, now? Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. So they're going to be in love for 30 seconds, and then he's going to die and disappear. Makes total wasted. sense. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, no, I mean, if you really think about it, none of the romantic potential relationships work in this entire trilogy. You know, like, they tried to kind of tease it with ray and finn even though she like automatically put them in the friend zone like from the very beginning um okay, they okay, even can I, can I interrupt uh yeah. so at one point they fall through the sand and finn is gonna say yep. something and he doesn't say it is, is that what he was gonna say oh 100 percent. because people were kind of like but this is what i'm talking about jj abrams tried too much to like listen to people because these were things that people were talking about, like, oh, man, how come Finn couldn't, like, have a romantic interest in, like, you know, Finn and Ray? But then Last Jedi came around, and then they did, like, Finn and Rose, and that was awkward. It was kind of so like, what, like, what, you guys like each other now? Like, or I don't even know if Finn likes her. Like, you I don't like think him? he ever 
put it out there that he actually liked her. She obviously oh. was into him. She st- obviously is still into him in this movie. And he's like, wait, no. she was in the movie for like two seconds. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fan outcry about that and take that for what it's worth. Not that it matters. Cause we're done now, I guess we're not uh, done we're, no, until focused. they introduce a new trilogy. We're not done. Do you think they're going to do a spinoff with uh, Jana, John or whatever her name is? Because at the end, you had, Williams. you had Lando being like, well, let's let's find out who your parents are. That and I'm made like, no sense. It's just like, Why? what? I have Why? a note on this. Um, Why is, is Lando like the intergalactic ancestry dot com? Why? Yeah. So Why him? If you believe the leaks on the Internet that are mostly accurate, at, yeah. at least in this kind of area, um, he was supposed to be your father, but they cut out that subplot entirely and they kept this one scene in, which, if you think about it, makes sense. So it's either it happened or somebody saw it and was like, well, obviously that's what they were doing. Kind of makes sense. So, though. Let me just say, as the resident black guy here, uh, that's some BS, <laughs> if that were true. So you mean to tell me in this entire galaxy, they're the only black people that can have like a little family, or t- really, <laughs> really, really, it's a I, ca- we're light speed jumping and hopping around, and you just know, okay, all right, yeah, I, all right, thank you, thank you, right. thank you for saying that. Yep, because no I, problem, I, I'll, I'll take that, I'll take it. That's some right. BS, that's some BS, same deal with uh. With, with with them trying to hook her up with uh with Finn, it's kind of like come on, you're you're a stormtrooper too. Go <laughs> Sitting cross like yeah. yeah, really. Oh <laughs> look, Finn. we're both black. Well, we should definitely be. Come together. on like, now, yeah. come yes. on now. Like yeah. it's I, just I it's, shook my head cheap. the entire time, and I think like the other couple of black people that were in my screening probably felt the same. But yeah, that was just please don't do that. Yeah, please. Um, how do we feel about making Ray a Palpatine? I'm going to leave you out of this because I feel like maybe, maybe you don't <laughs> have any opinion on this. But in my opinion, uh, it was unnecessary. It was more intriguing when she was just like a random person, didn't have any lineage. It's like Harry Potter, and mm. you have two like you knew normal parents, and all of a sudden they they have a wizard offspring. I would have much rather had that story Mm -hmm. than this convoluted bullshit where you have to bring your grandpa back to life from fucking nothing. Kill me. It just didn't make any sense. She did. What do you, what do you think? Dumb. And what I think it did was the bigger problem that's been happening with this star Wars franchise. Um, They reduced the galaxy once again. It's like, golly, so nothing can be outside of Palpatine and the Skywalkers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you Everything. have to be a descendant of a Jedi to be a Jedi. Like, that's the only way you could be powerful? Nobody else has this ability? Uh, you know, so to me, it was kind of like, I don't want to say it like it was unexpected, because, you know, there. I felt like her whole parentage situation would have been the likelihood of like five possible scenarios. You know, some people were saying that maybe she was Leia's daughter and something, something. I don't know. Maybe she was Obi-Wan's daughter and something, something. I don't know. Like there were like some, some type of things, but every time one of these theories would come up, it's like, guys, there are other people in this galaxy. A lot of them. Why does it have to be the people, the same people from the previous six, seven movies? It does not need to be that close in terms of the degrees of separation. Like, it's ridiculous. So, yeah, I mean, now they could have paid off uh, what we saw in Attack of the Clones, where Palpatine was talking uh, to Anakin saying like, hey, or maybe that was Revenge of the Sith, where he was like, hey, like, you know, my previous master knew how to like, you know, cheat death and I know ways of the yeah. dark side. So all of that was really just a tease. Um, what was, what's in the comics and the, and the other lore that he, you know, knows how to make clones and he's probably cloned himself. I thought it would have been more intriguing if, and maybe this is just me putting my theory hat on. If they had just made Ray a clone, they should have made him, uh, made her one of his clones 
So that way, when she does kill him, he possesses her body and boom, he lives on with a slight gender bend going on. Like, you can do all that stuff, make it a little bit more compelling, rather than, by the way, I had a family. Yeah. You know, like somebody also, knocked boots with this idiot. crusty old wrinkly bastard fox, apparently. Somebody <laughs> knocked boots with this guy. <laughs> yeah, right? His like, wrinkly old balls? Jeez. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it, though. You have, you, you're star wars you have so many freaking planets it's just not earth here it's and this universe. wouldn't even this wouldn't even happen on earth imagine if you're telling a story and you're like oh my god he is the son of the mother of this guy but she also is the daughter of this very important person with powers and they just meet up whatever that would never happen even on one like planet. they could have like, made it more sinister where palpatine took I don't know the genes of Anakin and mixed it with his own genes and created Ray. Like that would actually CRISPR explain. In space. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying that would explain her Mary Sue powers in force awakens at least, you know, so, j- something, but this was just, I don't know. It, I guess my biggest issue with it was not the fact that she, be, she was a Palpatine. I didn't like how they revealed it and how soon they revealed it. It was so soon, it was so early, and it was just so like, yeah, you know, that's your grandfather or whatever. And for me, by that time, I was like, that's it? Yeah. Like, okay, all right. It was like, the there's same no thing punch. with them explaining how he was still alive. By the way, I want to shout out Darkness5632, who's in our Twitch chat. He's talking about, uh, he's got an early leak, so take this with a grain of salt, because maybe, maybe yeah. it's just like uh, conflation, but according to the novel that's coming out soon... Uh, Palpatine escapes through a wormhole and if you watch episode 6 that blue stuff that's in the reactor shaft is a wormhole that he used to escape to Exegol he dies on the way to Exegol but once there all the cis spirits by the way that was a weird scene where there's like a stadium full of cis spirits that's fucking weird Uh, but once he's there all the cis spirits enter his body and bring him back to life so apparently that's what that's Uh. what the rumor is that they're going with doesn't make it any less convoluted but I wanted to I wanted to shout out this guy in the chat who's who's saying this is the story. Okay. Dude, show that in the movie. Uh, Why didn't yeah. you just show that in the movie? That would make too much sense. Too much. Okay. Uh I had another problem with this in that um the stakes are non existent. I agree. Uh I agree. anytime if you're gonna kill a character. I wanted Chewbacca to be dead. I didn't want him to be dead. But I wanted it to I mean something. It. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. gotta you gotta make that like stick. Also, yeah. sorry to sorry to interrupt, oh, but one of my big issues was does Ray just love leaving the squad behind? Like every fucking problem that happened in the movie seemed to be like she just wanted to go off and do it by herself and leave everyone behind. I've got a feeling. Yeah. I, look, I yeah. have the feeling. I'm gonna go out and fuck everything up for all of us. Let me just go wander by myself. And screw up everything. Okay. It yeah. happened like probably uh, six or seven times. Six or seven <laughs> times. Yeah. The the scene where she's g- takes the whatever the raft or whatever to the area where she fights Kylo Ren later on, and then when she's just wandering around in the desert because she f- has a sense that Kylo Ren is about to show up. Whatever. She's just screwing up everyone because she's not sticking with the gang. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Bitch. Back to my point, though. All right. Like, uh, of nothing sticking. Uh, they make a big deal out of C-3PO, who is the most annoying character since Jar, Jar Jar Binks uh, in this movie. They make a big deal of his memory being wiped, and then they just immediately give him his memory back, and he's fine all of a sudden. Uh, Ray stabs Kylo Ren through the heart or the chest or whatever mm-hmm. his weird torso is. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, heals him immediately. He's fine. There are yeah. no stakes in this movie. Anytime no. they killed somebody except for quote unquote Ben at the end, mm-hmm. bring him right back. That's not, yeah, there's no stake there. He uh, became one with the force. It's all good. It, does that make him like, <laughs> yeah, where did he go? Did he really well, go we, to the force Jedi or Sith die? Yeah. Like they, yeah, but where did he go? Like just because he was fine for four hours, he was now a good guy. Like they're like, yeah. okay, come on, you're good, you're good. Yeah. Come on, it, it's it's almost like their way of like going into heaven or something. Like, but you have to have 
you know, a change of heart. Like you have to be uh, at peace, you know, okay. with yourself in some way, shape or form. And when you do that, you get rid of all the darkness. I mean, we're getting into George Lucas, you know, philosophy here. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you know, but this is midi- all because of, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but this is all because of uh, what happened in A New Hope with uh obi-wan yeah. where he just like magically disappeared after the swipe and no one questioned it at the time nope. you know it, it was only until later we were like guys like what what just happened with that and then of course you know yeah. they started introducing like no 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 they uh they do that on purpose yeah i love how yeah. he how he got rid of the darkness but also at the end of the movie just murdered all of his like henchmen, all the guys he was traveling around with Let's talk to find that. Ray. He just murdered them. And you, know, you could tell yeah. in his face, he still had that like, oh, I'm going to yeah. kill you right now. You know, you yeah. don't think about it a lot because they don't show a lot of blood or anything, but there's a lot of death in the Star Wars movies. Oh, yeah. There is. They blow up entire planets and you're just like, okay, that's like a billion people dead. And speaking yeah. of that, no stakes. What's her name? Um, Poe's love interest wasn't. They blow up her whole planet, right? And then she's fine. Yeah. Like, oh, great. Again, yeah. another no stake. Also, tell me there wasn't a scene where he gives me the, like the, hey, you want to go bang one out? He did With that. Poe. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. That was that look, right? But yeah, yeah, everyone was laughing about that at the end because he blatantly did that with what's her, that girl at the end. Yeah. That was fucking weird, man. Yeah. Well, also, how do you say no to Oscar Isaacs? Come on. He's got that silver fox. He gets on. it in. He got it in with a with a droid last last movie. He didn't did. He? I forgot about that. Uh, anyway. Oh wait. No, that no, wasn't him. That was, that was young. Uh, that was. That was Lando. That was young Lando. Never mind. I'm wrong. It was Childish yes. Gambino. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never mind. Anyways, I was going to say the Knights of Ren are fucking worthless. They do nothing. Yeah, they're the they're glorified henchmen at this point. Like mm-hmm. henchmen never mind the, have uh, do. Yeah, I mean, never mind the force sensitivity or force abilities they might have had. Um, never mind the badassery that they used to have in the comics and stuff. They're just there. No different than uh, Snoke's henchmen in uh, Last Jedi. Just there that was for at a least good- a cool scene. Uh, yeah, at least. But the this was like. Mm-hmm. Red room, red costumes, you know, made for really colorful uh, visuals and stuff. This was just like, all right, just guys, we need, we got to fight. So, yeah, you know, it's that time in the movie. What do you guys think of like the red um, neon puff paint they use for Kylo Ren's mask? How about the fact that the, that the character that put it back together was just a chimpanzee? <laughs> It well, was like, are you yeah. running out of character designs? That was just a monkey, yeah. right? They probably, they probably did most of the movie too, but um, <laughs> I think, I think so. This was like another problem that I had, right? Which was a lot of the characters and the stories did literal backtracks from the Last Jedi. So you know, in the Last Jedi, and Kylo, I said, is one of the uh, the biggest victims of writing. So. In The Force Awakens, yeah, he was a spoiled, you know, or just immature emo guy. Bitch. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Todd. Yeah. In Last Jedi, I thought his character actually took a really interesting step forward by saying, like, you know what? Screw the Jedi. Screw the dark side. I'm going to do my own thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here like, what does the own thing look like? What does it mean to just be Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, where you're not beholden to whatever the sith do and you're not beholden to what the jedi do this is a dope new path but then when they introduce the movie and his his let's not forget his main goal after killing his previous master snoke was to go and kill palpatine that's the only reason he went there because he didn't want anyone to challenge his authority Mm -hmm. he goes there and palpatine's like wait 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 don't kill me I'll give you my this big old armada and make you the supreme leader. And Snoke is just like, okay. And he literally goes back, takes the mask that he broke, because that was supposed to be a representation of him killing the past and mm-hmm. moving forward. And he literally goes backwards. And that part, I was like, what are we doing? And there was absolutely no reason why Kylo couldn't have just killed Palpatine right then and there and still taking his army. Where were they going to go? 
Yeah, and Palpatine and had what? like those crusty ass fingers and everything. He was weakened. He could have sliced them suckers yeah. off. Just stab him right in the chest. Paper. This he this is like smoke. a an ongoing problem that I have with Star Wars is like the distribution Ugh. of power throughout characters. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. It's all out of whack. Like take take out a whole fleet with like your finger finger blast these things. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, like one 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 lightsaber will stop you, and then two is just like way too much. Mm-hmm. Like none of this I, shit I makes mean, any sense. None of that made sense. I mean, the whole I have never seen a lightsaber. Now let me see, because I think when Mace Windu was going against Palpatine, he was more so like deflecting it, the lightning, or but was he like pushing re- it back? Did Samuel yeah, okay, Jackson have a purple one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember it, that. It, it was just kind of cheap, like. I, do you guys watch Dragon Ball Z at oh, yeah. all? Come on. Okay. Yeah. That's it all like it was. It was like a no comment. Ha! And yeah. then like times yeah. two. And yeah. yeah. That's exactly it was a, what it was. It was a Gohan versus Cell moment. Like, no, we're all behind you. Okay, go. You know, like. Don't shit on that moment. Don't, sh- don't shit on that moment, though. That was a great moment in DBZ history. Great moment. <laughs> it was all right. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, free, Freeze aside. I've, it was I've, way better. I've gotten, in, I've, I've gotten in some some real debates. Over which was more epic, Goku and Frieza's the first transformation in Super Saiyan, yes, or uh, Gohan and Cell going Super I, Saiyan two. I will say, always be Goku and Frieza. I will say Frieza always. Okay, I'm with you guys then. I'm with you then. That's, okay. <laughs> I've noticed younger fans like the whole Gohan thing, and I'm like, you guys don't even understand. Like, no. anyway, you don't know what it was all. like before you knew what a Super Saiyan was. Exactly. Exactly. For years. Years. Yeah. We, didn't, we thought this stuff was a legend. I'm waiting for a Super Saiyan. Come save me. <laughs> we didn't even know it was possible uh, until it happened. But Darkness, anyway. who, uh, Darkness5632, who was in the chat, gave us the Palpatine theory, uh, is also talking about Kylo Ren. He reminds me of that school bully who was mean, becomes the leader of a clique, but then at the end, he ends up having helped the bully kid and beating up the clique he had. There and you go. Simple plan. Yeah, he's yes. like he he go. wears the the Letterman jacket at the beginning. Yeah, but then he like gets rid of him. He's like, no, I can't wear that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair. Um, I feel like I, oh oh, can we talk about Le- Leia just being like a, a a badass Jedi at some point? Like that's just so, okay. The problem with Leia is not the fact that she's like a badass Jedi. It's the fact that we are only informed about this now. Now, thank you. The best time to show us that very specific clip, that very specific clip, because I'm not going to sit here and act like, oh, it's impossible that Mm -hmm. Luke would have tried to train her and stuff like that. Show that to us in Force Awakens. Hey, in that 30-year gap, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Now that explains Mary Poppins in space. Now that explains everything else that she's done. Because I'm sitting here thinking, like, wait, why is Ray calling you master? What, like, is this just out of respect? Like, what? But so you know why the they t- didn't do that, right? What? Because they didn't have any fucking idea what they were gonna do with this story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. The lack of planning was clearly obvious, but it's just that at that point, we knew that Leia always had potential. And this was my issue even with uh, Force Awakens. When that came out, I had no problem with her having Force abilities, but I'm like, can you tease it? Can you at least show us that she is not Force-sensitive, but actually able to use the Force? A Jedi. Right, because there's a difference. People can be Force-sensitive where, oh, man. Finn is Force-sensitive. Right, he's Force-sensitive. Someone close to me dies, I feel that, right? I'm sensitive to that. I get that. But to actually do stuff, that usually comes with some type of training or you got to witness it or someone has to tell you about it. And, I mean, Ray completely bypassed a whole bunch of that stuff. But mm-hmm. Leia, on the other hand, it was just kind of like, nope, she could do it. She had the potential and boom, there there it is. She's doing it. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that General Hux just immediately gets murdered. Yeah. He served his purpose. They're like, fuck this guy. <laughs> He's done. That's fine. Are you talking about the, the, the younger, redhead yeah, general the younger, yeah. who was the spy in the first order? Why wouldn't he leave with them? Like because he really was like, oh, they'll have no idea if you shoot me in the leg. Because he probably wanted to keep being a spy. And yeah. look, 
I can just I can try and justify it. I can't justify it. I can try and justify it. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but since we're in Star Wars spoilers, should we talk Mandalorian for a second? <laughs> Sure, let's do it. Are you coming up? And TJ is saying that the echo in our Twitch stream is really bad. I don't care. Where's Brick? It's too late. Okay, let's keep uh, going. Mandalorian, you're caught up. I'm caught up. Mark? Yes. You watched I'm the one this up. week? Yes. Okay. Yes, it came out early, I know. Holy shit, that cliffhanger. That is such a dick move to release that early and then just be like, nope, you've now you've got to wait 10 mm-hmm. days instead yeah. of just a week. Yeah. It's rough. Uh, would you say that the Mandalorian is the best Star Wars that's been put out in 40 years? I would. Okay. And this this just coincides with my thought that the best way to um unite the Star Wars base and not piss people off is show us new stuff. Because no one can sit here and be like, no, no, no. It's really supposed to go this way. No, no, no. It used to be that way. No, it's all new. And if it's all new, we get to sit back and enjoy it. Because a lot of these things, you know, having a cute alien or whatever, that's not new. That's no. that's very Star Wars-ish. Yeah. Having some random androids here and there and, you know, having like some lightsaber or not lightsaber, but like gun battles. and All that stuff is all formulaic and we like it and i'm okay with it Mm -hmm. i love the fact that this is like a western in space and yeah by all means by default this is the best that we've gotten in terms of live action because clone wars is still really really dope so by all means clone wars and rebels okay that's good stuff juniors and rebels right yes okay his voice showed up in this. So did a lot of voices. Samuel Jackson. So did yeah. uh, Anakin Skywalker. I can't think of his name. Uh, Hayden Christensen. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that kind of pissed names. me off though. That uh, Mace Windu, Sam Jackson was there because I'm like, oh man, so you did die. He could have dropped a motherfucker, and I would have been like, <laughs> all right, all right. You're good. <laughs> uh, one other thing, since Dreams has been so active, Darkness has been so active in our chat. Uh, this is from him. I don't want to get your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, he says, I was not a fan of the final battle. It seemed to be uh, misused and mishandled in the Star Destroyers. Uh, was there need to... I'm sorry. I'm trying to read this. It's really small print. Have all of them used the Death Star tech? Okay. So basically, all the Star Destroyers have planet-destroying guns on the bottom of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where the fuck did that come from? Like lots of we're, time and prep time. Why? Why didn't lots. they do that a million times before? Uh, what do you mean? Instead of creating the, you like from the very beginning? fucking six Star Wars movies. Yeah, the entire thing has been. Oh, we built this giant thing that can blow up an entire planet. Now you just put that on a fucking ship, Star Destroyer, and now everything's yeah. okay. But well, technology is advanced. Clearly, yeah. How do we know that Palpatine <laughs> didn't do this within the last like year or so? Like, create all these ships with all those Sith people that were in the crowd clapping, you know, and you, you know, you know. So he says in the chat, I was hoping some of the ships would have been used as escorts to uh, lure the resistance towards them and then protect the ships with the tech on on them. So basically, they could have just basically taken those t- those ships. And use those giant fucking guns and been like, okay, now we're in charge of the galaxy. Turned them around. Yeah. Now you guys are fucked. Uh, yeah. So, look, the final battle didn't make any sense, no matter what. Um, yeah. Especially, boy, the, the fucking finger lightning, the finger, finger sparklies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, that's where you lost me. No. I was really, really, really on board until like the last 20 minutes of this movie. And it's not even... Not even just the third act or just the climax because I was really, really into it up until then. I hadn't checked my phone once, didn't look at the time. But fuck, man, he really botched that. Was that the first time in Star Wars lore that that has happened with this? Botch- no. No, the the sparklies. No, I, you just no, thought that was a uh, cop-out move? No, they've done that before. Okay. Yeah, they'll, they'll, so the entire thing of them calling Rey a Palpatine yeah. is like... Palpatine has been the one in the past that you've seen the finger sparklies out of. Okay. And you'll get there when you eventually watch these movies. Not there yet. 
But yeah, I'll the fingers, the finger sparklies is a Palpatine thing. So and why are you so upset about it? It just him. It's not innovative. It's not, and also okay. it's just wildly across the board, just like inaccurately powerful. Okay. Like he can stop an entire fleet of starships, mm-hmm. but he can't stop a girl walking at him with a, a lightsaber. Yeah. Like what? What are we doing here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that it, that got that kind of goes back to your whole issue with the power structures and like the power levels and stuff because you know when he um what I liked was the fact that he was able to use that force healing stuff in a in a bad way to steal the life from them yeah. to kind of like power himself up and kind of give himself a little juice. And I'm sitting here thinking like, okay, like I'm, I'm okay with that. I like that. Cause you know, it kind of goes with the whole dark side thing, you know, manipulating stuff. Sure. And I like the fact that it kind of rejuvenated his body a little bit. His crusty fingers started to get a little bit, you know, uh, healed up and everything. But at the same time, I'm like, you mean to tell me that you couldn't have, written having him get his energy back and he comes back you know bigger and badder and we're talking about one of the most powerful like the most powerful dark side users Mm -hmm. who took on mace windu almost lost but you know whatever uh took on yoda and defeated yoda you couldn't set him up for one last battle I'm sorry. With have you ever heard the tale of Dark Plague, just the wise? Yeah. Okay. I just had to throw that out there. I'm just saying, though. Like, no, you're you're 100 right. You couldn't you couldn't let this man go out with a bang like one last time. Like, ooh, I'm about to fight both of you guys. Like, we could have had a Darth uh, uh, Darth Maul and Qui Gon versus Obi Wan type of situation again. Just <laughs> something. They botched to kinda, that one too, though. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, but it was still entertaining. It was you know, it was like, okay, at least we get a two on one. We never, we hadn't seen that before yet. And it's like, it, yeah, just, no, I'm just going to do my Wicked Witch of the West thing and with some lightning and uh, I'll wait for you to push me back with the power of the collection force. I don't know. Like, it was, it was cheesy. It was dumb. It was dumb. It was very, very no. bad. It was very bad. I mean, we just got. A nice battle at the end of Force Awakens between Ray and and uh, and uh, Kylo, mm-hmm. uh, Revenge of the uh, Sith. You know Obi Wan going against Anakin. Like we've had some good moments where we at least had a good battle somewhere in the mix. There's no reason. This is the this is supposed to be the last movie. Come I'm on, still now. I'm still mind Come blown that Felicity. Carrie Russell was just like looking at Poe Dameron like, no, not into it. <laughs> just mind blown. I, d- the unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, okay. I'm going to try and shut us up about Star Wars now. I'm going to say, guys, put your last thoughts out now. Mark, I'll give you a chance. God, we shit on it a lot, actually. In the last we really did, minutes. especially for like yeah. me saying it was it was decent and it was yeah. worth a watch. Like I kind of shit on it a lot. I actually <laughs> might watch this one again. I didn't... W- I think I saw Force Awakens once, even though that was decent. Last Jedi I saw once. I might go watch this one one more time. But there were issues for me watching it where I just thought it was corny, a little too much, and that sometimes just didn't make sense for me. And even for the Star Wars guy, I was like, did that, like, how did that make sense? And how was that just not the most ridiculous thing ever? Overall, so many, sh- sorry, go ahead. No, overall, the, the action was good. The, the fight scenes, especially when, uh, Ray was in the ship where Darth Ma- Vader's mask was, and they did the whole like them being in different places kind of thing. With the, that was beautifully shot, it was. and it was some of the. I'm a big lightsaber fight guy. If it looks corny and looks cheesy and doesn't look like they're giving it all, they're all. I'm I'm done with it. But Adam Driver, man, he can like the way he's swinging it and putting like force into it. Like I, it was believable. So there yeah. were those fight scenes throughout the movie, which kept me intrigued. But at the same time, they brought in a lot of characters. They were jumping around way too much, in my opinion, and uh, it, I just wasn't for it that much. 
but it, okay. it was fine. I'll I'll say go see it. Obviously, if you're a huge Star Wars guy, you don't need me yeah, to, telling you, you to go do that. That's the thing but, is like we're not going to influence anybody's opinion on this. Yeah. Like, people are going to go. See. I've been talking to Tofty. Tofty, you know, is like one of the biggest Star Wars nerds I've ever talked to in my entire life. Mm-hmm. He's going to see it tonight. I'm really anxious to see what, what his thinks. opinion is. Yeah. But uh, E-Man, final thoughts? Um, Yeah, look, if you're a fan of Star Wars, I mean like hardcore fan, you will like this movie. There are so many things in this movie for you um, that you will absolutely just have a good time, like good reviews, bad reviews, whatever. Um, I, I'm more concerned about like just the the casual fans like myself, people who are not as well versed in the uh, Star Wars lore. Um, this is going to be 50-50. Um, I think that people are going to have a good time, but some things are just not going to be uh, executed very well. And, uh, you know, again, I think that's just because of the bad writing, bad character development and just mm-hmm. terrible plot structure. So, you know, it's, it's fine, but I don't believe that fine is acceptable for star Wars. Fine is fine for like a Rocky movie or something like, yeah, especially that's fine. being the last yeah. film of the, this saga, you know? Right. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of hype yeah. and there's a lot of stuff invested in this. It's kind of like you had too much, you had too much invested to screw this up, yeah. and being mediocre or even average is just not good enough um, for what was at stake. And even though there were no stakes, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. in this movie for real, but it is what it is. I mean, I just personally hope again that Disney um, takes a message from this, and they're gonna make their money. But I hope that they learn to just trust in doing new material and letting that process breathe on its own. Mm-hmm. Don't let it be knee jerk reactions. Don't don't worry about what critics are going to say. Just focus on good storytelling, good, compelling characters. Don't rush things. We're not going anywhere and we'll be fine. Yeah. Shout out to Baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda, the king. Travel. gonna have to choke a bitch um i love that motherfucker <laughs> sorry <laughs> fully in on it uh yeah i get it um man i feel like you guys are trying to change my mind in this movie i, I was about to ask you how do you feel now talking from when about this it all started because I, yeah yeah i i stand by my my go see it i, I still enjoyed it i upon re-watching it I may change my mind on certain things. I still think that it was entertaining. It was there was never a dull moment. They they didn't do the thing that they did in the the prequels or the original trilogy where they're like just filling space. Where they're talking about oh well this is the the lore mm-hmm. or like the sacred texts or whatever. So without having that, it's it's entertaining at least, and that's really what we can ask for. If if I could ask, I would love for you guys. Before you do your second watch, I'd love for you guys to go back, if you had the time, and go through the whole thing chronologically again. And the only reason I ask for that is because, personally, I think that they crapped all over Anakin and his story. And it's only because we haven't had certain things filled in Mm -hmm. with Palpatine. Because one issue that I have is like, yeah, if that leak is true, then screw it, like, whatever. But, like, if but what does it matter survive, now if that's true? We don't like how are we supposed to know that, you know, unless that's, they, that, that's my point. Yeah, that's so true. like we we've been dealing, you know, in the prequels and stuff, we've been dealing with prophecies and, you know, force visions and mm-hmm. all these things that are supposed to happen. And it's kind of like if Palpatine, let me see, if Palpatine lived this entire time and if he was supposed to be like the, the if you get rid of Palpatine, you bring balance to the force. And if Anakin was the chosen one, and if he was really supposed to bring balance to the force, Mm -hmm. but Palpatine lived, then Anakin died for nothing. And that prophecy meant crap. And what does that mean? I hadn't thought about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it it, it adds this complication. Now, of course, you can avoid that if, for example, Palpatine did die and he just came back through whatever means. That's a whole different story. But again, we don't know. Because the movies don't tell us anything. So, yeah, there is a risk that you just made Anakin die for nothing. 
the whole prophecy means nothing. Uh, uh, Ray just came in and hijacked the Skywalker name, like the audacity. <laughs> like, who, well, they're know, cousins what? now. It's fine. They're from okay, Alabama. All right. They're kissing cousins. So yeah. I guess that does run in the Skywalker family, right? Ooh, good point. So, yeah. Right. But anyway, there. I'm still blown away. That girl just was like, no, no, Poe Dameron, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of gray hair. They definitely Dude, died. He's his a hair. silver fox. I know, but his hair was straight black in that film. The like, original? Uh, no, the, this in this, uh, Rise of Skywalker. His beard is like fully silver. Yeah, but I, I saw a photo of him like walking the streets of Hollywood, and he is he's pretty gray, but still, yeah, he's a good looking dude, handsome man. He's got to be like five up. five four though, five five little guy. <laughs> Isn't that all Hollywood actors? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, pretty pretty I mean, if we're talking about Star Wars and the Deus Ex Machinas that come in, I can recommend a movie that Oscar Isaac is in, Ex Machina. It's very good. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, and on that note, I will take the spoilers note away. Let's talk about our weekly recommendations. All right. Uh, E-Man, as our guest, I will let you go first. What have you been watching, reading, or talking about this week? Oh, man. Um, I got so much stuff. I'll give you um, a couple couple movies. Um, 1917, I think that's coming out this week. Mm-hmm. Um, it is. I wasn't not into um I wasn't into uh war movies like at all um cuz it's just not really my thing but that movie right there because it was supposedly shot um with one take it's fantastic 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 okay. movie Wait what? Um, can, yeah, can you explain the one take thing. Yeah, so basically uh, 1917 is basically about these two English soldiers mm-hmm. who um, they have this important mission. They have to go get a secret message to their, you know, to this other army base Before or whatever. They get ambushed or whatever, and all they get ambushed yeah, and all that brother. Yep, I saw. But, yeah, I saw yeah, the trailer. Yeah, but forget all that. That okay. doesn't matter. What what you're really watching this for is the mere fact that this is one long continuous take from beginning to end. No, no fucking no way. fucking way. Amazing. I mean, you feel like you're in it the entire time. I'm Holy pretty sure shit. they cheated a couple times, you know, they like to. like you you like, cut across like a dark Yeah, like I'm sure they to, did. There's no possible way. It doesn't matter. It doesn't that. matter. Like while you're watching it, you're like, we're in this. Wow. I don't know how you shot this, but I like it. Like I could count on one Two fingers. <laughs> How many times I could I notice twice that it was actually like, no, you guys had to cut right here. You had to. But outside yeah. of that, it doesn't matter. It's intense, suspenseful, awesome. I'm blown just away by great. that. Um, I was not excited for this until you just said that. I Look, I was not excited at all. I was about to skip the screening and I went to go see it and I was like, holy crap, this was really good. It should absolutely win best cinematography at the Academy Awards. Do you um, know who was the cinematographer on it? Ah, uh, not uh, I wrote it down somewhere, okay. but not not a big deal. Um, when was the last movie that even came close to doing something like that? Birdman. Yeah, I didn't see Birdman. Okay, mm, that's okay. Birdman did a that's lot okay. of it. Really? Okay, it was very weird. I know Lala. Yeah. La La Land with Gosling and Stone when they were dancing it was yeah. like 15 minutes. And I'm like, wow, that was one take. But they were dancing, yeah. too. So you have to give them a little more respect. It's never one be- take, though. That's the thing is. Right. Yeah. The, the seamlessness. I mean, if anything, that's probably best editing, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Probably. I mean, but-, but but even. No, I would still give it best cinematography because there are some angles that they take. And I'm like, how did you guys capture this? Like, you know, like you're running with these guys into trenches yeah. and climbing in the hill. And, and like the camera is just flawless. And I'm like, is this a drone? Is this are you guys attached to something like it's nuts? But yeah, absolutely. Watch that. Okay. Um, if you want some sort of anime type of watch on Netflix, CS Manos on Netflix. I chains? had no idea. This is like a. Mexican culture, Chinese kung fu, vampire zombie thing. That is so many adjectives. Is it a Japanese anime though? It's drawn similar to Boondocks. 
Okay, okay. So, you know, uh, if you already liked, in. If you liked how Boondocks was drawn, yeah. yes, my Boondocks, Afro Ninja, yeah, absolutely. Right. It's it's very similar in terms of visuals, but it's centered like in Mexico, so you get that Mexican culture. But it's like these Mexican teens are trained by like this kung fu Chinese monk. They are crazy cool with their kung fu and then they deal with like these zombie vampire things it's nuts it's only eight episodes all right i don't think anyone has been talking about it i'm probably actually going to do a video about it because it's that good Um, Mano. you said it's on netflix okay on netflix s-e-i-s manos m-a-n-o-s six manos six hands there you go all right i'm in uh mark what about you all this talk of the Watchmen finale, Eman, you have to watch the show. Last episode, I said that it did not outdo the boys, but after the final episode, I will say this is the best season. Well, it's the best show of this year. But my recommendation is actually DC Comics released Doomsday Clock number 12, their final issue. This was a series. This was a run that's been going on for two years to release to release 12 issues. Yeah, because they put issues. it out like once every three months. Well, it wasn't supposed to be like that because they did the thing that happens with a lot of comics where they'll release like the first four issues and they're like, all right, this is good, going good, but then they switch up writers or do whatever they need to do. But very strong ending for this comic book series for Doomsday Clock. So even if you don't read comics, I would recommend the trade paperback is bound to come out in the next couple months. Pick that up, read this. It's obviously, it's... Not any type of like Alan Moore original Watchmen type of um, writing, but it's really freaking good. So check it out if you're okay. I will comics. definitely wait for the trade. I would n- like if I had been waiting and I had been buying an, es- an issue every three months, I would have no fucking idea what was going on. <laughs> that would be infuriating to me. No, it, it. I'm with you because I reread issues one through 12 because i was reading it for the first one through four issues that happened yeah but that's not what week after week and then i had to go back and watch it because yeah i read it because yeah you have no idea what's going on you forget about it but yeah Yeah, i'm I'm gonna cheat i'm gonna cheat and just watch like a youtube video that will read those to me so (laughs) yeah fair explain it to you all right i i have a recommendation that i'm i'm actually gonna pawn off on e-man I started watching The Witcher. I've only seen one episode uh, because it just released today. Uh, the opening scene is Henry Cavill fighting a giant spider, and I was just immediately in. Yeah. But, E-Man, yeah. you got the first five episodes early. Can you give yeah. me, like, a mini 30-second review? Yeah, just real quick. I mean, I personally wasn't a fan of uh, how they're telling the story um, just because it can get a little confusing. Um, I'm not, I, I, I'm not a gamer. I haven't played the video games. I haven't read the books. So the way they just kind of throw you into this mystical world, you just have to run with it and catch up. Um, but it's still very entertaining. Henry Cavill is perfect for this role. Um, it's not like they're making him do anything. So it's like, Hey, play an emotional character. Mm -hmm. Got it done. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually really fun, (laughs) really entertaining, um, and it's wild, man. Like, I think a lot of people will like it. How many scenes of him just jacked in a bathtub are there? Oh, there are some bathtub scenes. Yeah. <laughs> We're just it, like, it's all come there. here. You know what it's I will say there. about this, no. though? Is if you if you hate the lightsaber fighting in Star Wars, the sword fights in this show, at least in episode one, are fucking incredible. Really? Okay. Yeah. They are. They have a really good fight scene. And like episode four or five, you'll know it when you see it, but it's, it's, they put some, uh, dude, they put some time and effort into that one. Episode one, he goes ballistic and just kills like eight people. I was like, God damn, man. They go in. They go in. I'm pumped for it. He is so, and it's like, it's his face. Like you can see that it's him. He did the training. Yeah. It's the, the sword play is so good. So yep. fully yep. in on this so far. Only one episode in. Obviously got nine hours to go with it. Mm-hmm. I tried to get my wife to watch it, and then I watched the first episode without her, and I was like, <laughs> she's going to fucking hate this. And you're like, I'm not waiting for you. It's, I'm, it's I'm going. Not Game of also, Thrones. don't bother. Just watch it by yourself, guys. If, if your wife's not in this shit, it's not like Game of Thrones at all. 
She's oh. going to hate it. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'll say is uh, the far side.com. So if you're like me, you, your first introduction to actual comics was the Sunday funnies. Mm-hmm. And it was always the far side, which is by, by far the funniest comic strip out there. It's always non sequiturs in a one box thing. And now for the first time ever, they're being released on a website. So like a daily thing that is the far side.com. So if, if you were like me and you had like a far side 365 day calendar, mm-hmm. like a one comic a day thing. Now they're all available online for the first time starting this week on the far side.com. Wow. So it was a big influence in my dark comedic kind of mm-hmm. <laughs> upbringing, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'll just put that out there, but, um, all right. At this point, E-Man, I'm going to ask you one more time to plug everything you got going on. If you got a special event going on, let us know about it. Tell me what you got. Okay. So, um, yeah, once again, you could definitely find me, uh, E-Man's movie reviews. That's at E-Man's reviews. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, as ter- in terms of projects. So I've got two things that I'm going to be working on, uh, real soon. Um, I am, if you check out my YouTube channel, I am going to tell you about my very first trip to LA um, where I got to meet Eddie Murphy. And I'm going to tell you uh, the story of how I told Eddie Murphy the worst joke in the world. Um, So (laughs) be on the lookout for that. And then um, probably in uh, in the coming weeks, I will also be doing a Black Widow theory video. Right. Um, where I will predict something very interesting about Taskmaster. Um, I think we're going to have something that might make fans a little upset, but I'll show, I'll, I'll throw it in. The, actually, I don't know. Do you guys want? Do you guys want the exclusive I spoiler? Or? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. I mean, I, I'll explain it obviously deeper in the theory, but I think they're going to gender bend. Taskmaster. Um, I think Taskmaster is going to be a woman. And my theory is that it'll actually be someone from the Red Room from Black Widow's past. That kind of makes sense. Okay. So, you know, my evidence is very weak, but who cares? You know, it'll make for a decent story when I put it all together. Um, but think about if you're right. You'll be the first I mean, one out there to say it. Hey, I'll take that, too. I. I've been the first one to be very wrong too. So <laughs> I, I'll take either one. I'll take either Fair. one, but um, you know, putting it all together is really going to be the difficult thing. You know, I mean, you can say any wild stuff you want, but until you put it together and have some compelling evidence, that'll be, uh, that'll be the real thing. So um, be on the lookout for that. And uh, yeah, you know, I'll probably put out some other fun stuff as well. All right, man. Well, as always, we really appreciate you coming on. Anytime you want to come on, you give us a call. We'll talk about whatever you want. (laughs) All right. We literally, we're always just looking for any reason to kick Brick off the episode. So (laughs) I miss Brick, man. Brick. Uh, He's he's whatever. Uh, He's actually going to be in town next week. But uh, this is actually, we do need to plug. Next Sunday, we're doing our first ever Dungeons and Dragons game. That's going to be interesting. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. We're going to do that in a live stream. So keep your eyes peeled for that. We'll be on the Twitch channel with that uh, next week. Maybe we'll do 1917 now that E-Man recommended it. But yeah. I would, you guys will not regret it. I'd be forcing that. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Well, as always, you can find us on all social media platforms at the Chumpcast. You can also call or text us at 847-920-6107. And E-Man, thank you for joining us. Yep, appreciate it, E-Man. Until next time. Jumps out, motherfuckers. Peace.